dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end game sorry free to one live <laughs> I was <laughs> muted <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, are you ready? Three, two, one, live. Oh, shit. I'm and then we all just sit yeah. there. <laughs> False start. Um, anyway, or delay of game. Whatever. Um, <laughs> back to Salt Marsh. Back to, in fact, the demi plane of Dementlia, which we are currently residing in. This is where we are in a land of illusion. Ruling over the land is Duchess Cedra Donaire. She has the power to disintegrate any she finds guilty of lying to her. Cedra herself, this, the lord of this realm, is private, always masked and quite mysterious. Previously, the party learned of a political prisoner of Cedra's named Dominic. Someone claiming to be the true heir to Dementlia and the Donaire royal title. They rescued this man and he has taken them into this strange countryside. To a house constructed among the ruins of a castle. He explained to them that he and Cedra returned there at some point to a place of their child, to this place of their childhood. But he remembers nothing of what happened within. They have learned that three spirits haunt this home. Mara Silvra, a fierce woman in knightly armor. Dranzorg, Lord Dranzorg, a burly man wielding an enormous axe. And a kind woman in a dress and apron who seems to be the mother of Cedra and Dominic. I believe they've learned her name to be Theodora. The party found Theodora's journals scattered through the house, which indicated a plan initiated by two feuding families. Cedra and Dominic would be raised as equals, as brother and sister, and ascend into aristocracy together. This would hide all evidence of the past grievances between the family, hopefully allowing the children to start anew a new peaceful cooperative future for the two houses. <clears throat> the party then found and executed the Chimney Witch, a fearsome creature of four arms and many, many elbows on each arm that um, came, ambushed them, and tried to unsuccessfully to eat a few of them. Uh, they slew this creature in the playroom where young Dominic and Cedra used to play. And now, after um, restoring a sigil on a door near the playroom, a door that now bears the mark of the um, of the goddess Ezra, they have moved into the room and there's a feeling of safety warmth and goodwill in here however nether 
when you walk in, you're able to walk in just fine, but Doll stand, sits flying at the doorway. Don't think I can kind of in here. Nope, can't do it. Not. Hmm. Just can't. Is it something you can see that I can't? Doll kind of flies forward a few times. Oh, no, can't be in here. No, can't do it. Magic wall. Hmm. I understand. I'm curious, though. Does it extend around the entire room? Um, Doll kind of looks around. I don't see windows. I try and fly up through the chimney. DM, is this a room that we're going to be just, we're just in for now and we'll be leaving it at the end of the uh, short rest or whatever, or are we? It's up to moving, you. What do you guys want to be, do? Are we um, moving beyond this point? Is there like, I guess what I'm asking, is there one Oh, I'm sorry. Exit from you're not room? on the, um, you're not on the map. I was just about this to room is a, uh, <laughs> no This map. room is essentially a dead end. Um, okay. There is only one door leading away from there and a, um, there is a fireplace. This appears to be a children's bedroom. Show me where, which one we're in. And is my familiar allowed in there? Ah. Yulak is not. No, oh. cannot okay. fly in either. Well then, just stay there. And if anything tries to creep up on us, let me know. I would assume Dahl would kind of fly up into the rap rafters. Um, maybe you made a bit nervous by the fact that just a moments ago in the combat, um, a, a dozen or half a dozen or so toys animated and began attacking the party. But it all seems to be quiet for now. Okay. So I believe that when we left off last time, we had just gotten the uh, dramatic reading from Sarayan of the latter half of Theodora's diary, which was procured from the skeleton? Yes. I would love to investigate the rest of the room with Melvin's help. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. He, uh, uh, Immediately press gang into service. <laughs> it, it, am, I, am I taking the lead or are you... You got the better eyes, kid. Uh, okay, okay. Um, I'll take a look around the room then. Go for it. Sweet fuck. Ooh. <laughs> that's that's a total of a ten at advantage. You feeling all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little shaken up still. That chimney witch was pretty creepy. Yeah, a couple of those toys got you good. Do you need to sit down for a bit? Uh, yeah, maybe. This might be a good idea. Let's just take a breather. Maybe it's the weight of guilt of wantonly throwing magic around with no consequence. Uh, okay. okay. Just, we've just, all just tossed, to help out. We've all tossed some arcane energy around here and there. It's fine. We can all just take a chill pill. Or have a drink. It's fine. I, and I did consent, so it's okay. An investigation of 10 does not um, <clears throat> yield anything particularly interesting. Um, it's uh, um, strange, though. This room looks preserved. There's where everything else in the house is broken, tumbled over, covered in a layer of dust. This room is immaculately clean. Weird. Yeah. Did one of the speaking dolls, was one of the speaking dolls in the room with us or were they just in the outside room? Um, A couple of them 
spoke briefly mm -hmm. in the room, but um, yeah. The yeah, so the uh, blue dragon and then the tin knight on the other bed. Did both speak to you before? Speaking to me. Yeah, and when we were back out in the other room, one of them was like, oh, we're going to go to the safe place now. Bye. It's mm -hmm. probably here. Bye. Yeah, exactly like that. I know. <laughs> I, I'm, if we're going to take a minute, I'll, I'll take some time to figure out what this stuff is that we found earlier, if that's okay. Remo. Um, I'm going to go out over into the corner and start ritually casting Identify on this wand. And I'm oh, yes. going to have a rest. Nether stares unblinkingly at Melvin, mostly because her eyes are in the other room, but it's still pretty creepy. <laughs> I was going to say. Um. But yes, uh, you feel quite comfortable in this room. As I said, you can take as much time if you guys would like to short rest, uh, you can do so. Yes, please. Yeah. Or... Go ahead and factor that in. Uh, Melvin, you will reveal this to be a wand of magic missiles. Nice. Oh, excuse useful. me. No, I was, it is. Um, it is not. It is a um, wand of regular missiles. The wrong one. It is <laughs> this a. Is, this is the one that looks like a melted candle. For clarification. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is candles. a. Um, it is a wand of the war mage. Oh. Oh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> the wand of the war mage. That doesn't give me anxiety at all <sighs> hey you never know <laughs> one person's wand of the war mage is another person's wand of orcas <laughs> casual thanks anyway the well so clearly two, if peter mentioned plus two variety so Ooh. damn son Clearly, if Peter mentioned a uh, Wand of Magic Mrs. Back, so that we haven't turned this place over enough. <laughs> we need to keep searching. Or, or he's just confusing it with Melvin's attempts to craft one. Shh. It may okay, have no. been my eyes jumping around in my notes to the wrong spot. So. <laughs> Nether, Nether will not be able to contribute to any sort of investigation as she cannot see in this room. She could, like, do the Velma thing and wander around with her hands, just sort of feeling around, but she's not going to. If this and deck of cards... Are... Oh, sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, 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 I was going to say, if, if this in the image here, if that deck of cards actually exists, I'm totally just, like, sh shuffling them, like, because I've got, like, literally nothing else to do right now. <laughs> Short rests aren't so exciting for bards, I guess. Yeah. I'm also at full hit points. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. Well, look at you. Good for you. Um, Good for I'll, you. One time it is a regular identify. set of cards, but a full one. Nice. Once this that staircase done, that I'm looking at is... I will also detect magic. Okay. This staircase that I'm looking at here is messed up. Did, did anybody else comment upon that? It does not look like it should work. It's a it's, little scary, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's, Does it is it just go in a in a just around? So there. So uh this is a door and this goes down. Like, okay. Here. This is another door and this goes up. Okay, got it. That's a lot. So what's this yeah. room then? Um so yeah, it just looks to be a children's bedroom. And then uh you as you are sitting there, you do see um slight shift as the um, tin knight on the bed kind of rolls over, the eyes light up. Are you allowed in here? Well, we're in here, are we not? Let's not be a hungry thing. The hungry things can't come in here. How many hungry things are there? That's concerning. Um... 
Um. Um. <clears throat> more than ten. <laughs> what? <laughs> are, are there actually more than ten, or do you not know? So you just came up with a number. Yes. Good answer. Okay. I am not to speak of that which I do not know. Did your mom tell but you that? I don't know the exact amount. There's a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. And where do Thank they usually hide? Honest. Um well, they just come and go. Things just wake up sometimes. You know, um it, uh Auntie Mara says it's it's things remembering the what's been taken from them. Do, does Auntie Mara still talk to you? Or has it been a while? Hmm. I haven't seen her for a while. Okay. Could you like, I don't know, give us a range like weeks, months, years? I don't, I haven't seen the sun for a really, really long time. Okay. Oh, that sounds terrible. I mage hand like very lightly flick another. <laughs> Um, What's upstairs? We're on the top floor. Up uh, uh, higher than that is just the roof. Hmm. And the 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 light that um, mom mom called it the witch light, but it's supposed to be a good thing to keep to help keep bad things away. Interesting. Well, we just killed the witch. I'm assuming so, anyway. Melvin, did we kill the witch? Uh, as, as far as I know, whatever it was we were fighting is definitely dead. And she was definitely hungry. And she had long arms. I think you were hungrier, Talise. I mean, I still am. Eat your fucking That's good. Rations. <laughs> That's good. Witch lights on the roof? Is that yeah. what you said? Okay. Let's take a look then, shall we? Everyone rest it up. I am ready to okay. smash something else. I can send Doll up there to look around. Yeah, I can take a peek. Right sure. Uh, but before before we leave, let me take another look around. But if you want to send Doll up ahead, that's fine. Oh, take a Would look around. Would you like some guidance? Uh, uh, sure. Why not? Have some guidance. So, DM, I'm going to take another look around now that I have to deck magic up. Okay. Um, there is a faint magical aura coming from both of these toys. That is the only magic that you sense in this room. Other than the fact that there is a magical aura it's that, um... Of abjuration that well, is it abjuration do, 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 of evocation that is contained really by the exactly by this room it is strongest at the door and throughout this whole room this room seems to be under the effect of a spell of the evocation variety Melvin does it extend to the chimney Uh, it seems like it does. DM, am I incorrect? It would stop at that? the floor and at the ceiling, but yes, it would include the chimney. It, it at least includes the part of the the fireplace that's in the room. Well, in that case, probably best not to send Doll. I don't feel comfortable having him be outside without us being able to get to him. 
Well, let's go, shall we? I'll lead. <clears throat> okay. Up, oh, you guys can um. Mm -hmm. My head up the stairs. Bye. Bye, kids. Bye, bye now. Bye -bye. <laughs> I say to the toys as we leave. <laughs> um, the blue dragon, uh, the eyes light up and say, uh, "Oh, bye." Come back if you want to play a game. Sure thing. And uh, the roof here is quite slick um, with moss and it, it's damp with sort of a perpetual dew that seems to hang about the slate tiles. Uh, it will be... Um, dif a difficult and treacherous walk to move um, anywhere away from the hatch to get out to here, which is where um, there is a chimney, but also on top of that, there is a small... Um, I'm trying to think of the what the, the word is. I've, I've forgotten it. They, um, they like, look like little gazebos on top of buildings. They're just little... It's just a little... Um, Cupola? Cupola. It's a tiny little stone cupola. Thank you. Uh, next Pinozo. to the chimney. <laughs> and it looks like there's a spot for a little lamp. But we, nothing actually Or a spot lit. for a little oil. Or like there's a little bowl there that looks like yeah. it is a functions like a lamp. Does it look empty? It does. From here, at least. Light it. This Who is dangerous. Wants to walk on the slippery roof. I'll pull out some rope. Put some knots. I'll have Doll fly over to where the light is. Is it? Is it, it, you said there were? Did you say there were a, a glass window or? Like in this cupola? Uh, no, it's it's open mostly open to the elements. Um, there is uh, a series of. Uh, stone columns and then the uh, cupola on top it looks like someone could just just it's just big enough where you could stick your hand through and fill the bowl with a little bit of oil and then a um, uh, a match or a wick or something to light it I'm gonna have doll do a quick look around to see if there's anything other than just the natural treacherous nature of this roof if I may okay Doll can certainly investigate. An investigation check. Okay, that's intelligence, right? Mm hmm. Uh, not rolling. I'll roll here. So that's going to be a total of 17. Uh, interesting. So 17 uh, is Doll's buzzing around kind of looking around notices some marks on this cupola on the witch light and it looks as if there are uh marks of damage on it um almost like some being struck with a sharp metal object at times little chips coming from it like someone assaulted this thing basically at one point Looks like somebody at some point didn't want this thing to be here. Aye, probably the witch. She didn't really do like cutty. She was more of a grab and bite. Are are we? Are we? Is whatever is going on in this house? Is it done? Or I have no idea. Because I have a a bad feeling that if it's not, then lighting anything here is going to cause a great deal of anger we should perhaps prepare fair it, um you guys say it's been hit by something metal because i'm still downstairs <laughs> yes like, yes it's been so, hit by something metal metal 
So we know somebody that uses a big metal axe. Somebody. Right? I've got that told axe. Me he Transorg. Right. So he might not want us to light it if it's supposed to drive away evil things. And I'm yelling this and he's probably like haunting me right behind me. Well, he's right behind me, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Just light no. the bastard thing. Let's go. There isn't a, like it's empty though. We would need oil and a wick, right? There is some residue light. in there. Okay. You think? Does anybody have a taper? Mm. Do I have, I have a tinder box, and that's about it. Oh wait, I have an alchemy jug. <laughs> <laughs> I have so that. much oil. <laughs> So we don't even we don't even have to walk to it. We could just make a trail of oil along the top, and we'll we'll burn down the house after all. Just Yay! like now, Shit. now it's really Barovia. Yeah, <laughs> some things never change. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay. I mean, if somebody will give it to me, then I can have Doll do it. Doll can carry around an alchemy jug. We need is something that's lit. Or a spell that does damage that's fire. Oh Melvin, don't you like I I can do that. Oh I, I have same Z's. I have Firebolt. I have Sacred Flame. That's that's radiant, not fire. It's yeah, another it's one of those it's one flame. of those annoyingly titled <laughs> spells. Flame. I know I was gonna say that's radiant. Made Chill that touch. Mistake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chill touch. There's no touching. It's not cold. <laughs> no touching. But no. We, no we're touching. Gonna have to get the, no touching. The, we're going to have to get the alchemy jug over there somehow. I don't think that Doll is uh, going to be able to carry that. I suppose it depends on how heavy it is. It is 12 pounds. That's too much for Doll. <laughs> it's also too much for a single mage hand or two mage hands. Well, just, Three you know, somebody, hands. like, rip a piece of your clothing and put that in the oil and then well, have Doll carry that. I, I, I have a rope. flask. Yeah. I, I have, have a three sure. pound. You want to just rappel over there? I, uh, I've got some rope. I'll hold on to the rope. I have a three pound oil jug. Um, I'm Oil I'm flask. Gonna... I really Let me try something before we use the rope. Hold on. Um, and DM, I'm going to cast Prestidigitation to try to clean a one foot area of the um, roof of all of the moss and other things that are making it slippery. Does that work? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can kind of dry it out a bit. Um, it still is about 20 feet from you guys. Um, well, it'd take a while, but I guess I could do this a couple times. One foot at a time, baby. <laughs> and ours has got a jug. Can we just not use that? Let's just do that. Use your yeah, magic here. Her. Use the jug. We'll dig into my pack and pull out my small leather oil flask and whoever wants it. Um, Nether um, raises her hand and water from the moss rises up spins around turns into a hand and she reaches out takes the oil jug and <laughs> takes the top off of it has the hand how heavy is the oil flask three pounds. three pounds oh you said that i didn't hear um <laughs> nice so now there's gonna have it fly over and pour Slow it down. out on to the um into the area that Dahl has shown mm -hmm. her is appropriate for the oil, and then for bring the back the flask. Okay. And the hand dissipates, dropping a nice uh, splash of water on Inaris as it drops the, uh, the flask into her hands. That ought to burn. Burn it. I do you want me to do it? Hi. Um, baby, baby. Right, I'm gonna point my. Heather's uh, gh gonna hold on to something. 
I'm going to point my quill at it and cast a uh, firebolt as a fiery quill shoots out the end of the the quill at at this bowl. This bowl. It's actually a grenade. <laughs> So uh, the fiery energy zips out, and um, with a there's a small explosion of light, and then um, darkness for a moment, and then a flicker of a flame is kindled in the bowl and uh, casts a flickering um, orange light, which reflects off these glistening tiles that are um, so slippery and everywhere around you, and you have not had to even move. In the light, you then see three figures standing before you, hovering just off the um, uh, off the surface of the roof, and they look almost paralyzed in space, um, as if they're there against their will and struggling ever so slightly. The first, making them larger for you. It's like I this. Sure. Second. And the third, the three of them stand before you and you hear a um, sort of cacophony of voices in your head. Um, it's hard to sort them out uh, as each of them speak to you simultaneously, almost through a mental connection. Um, you hear the gruff voice um, of that you recognize as Dranzorg. This land knew no peace until it met my strength. Serfs are serfs no longer, and flourish due to my mercy. I punish those deserving, and I have been justly awarded this land as my own. Fight with me! And you hear Mara's voice. The tyrant took my ancestral land in a spree of murder and unjust conquest. Do what my knights were too cowardly to accomplish. Join me in cleansing my rightful home of this usurper and all the scum that conspired with him. And then a softer voice. Please believe me. I didn't know what was happening to my children. I thought we were saving them saving them from the past. This is a place of forgetting and I shall soon be forgotten, but the first feuds of the land still haunt it. Please, Cedra and Dominic should not suffer because of our ignorance. Defeat the malice within both of them and free them from these chains. And you hear the three of them um uh simultaneously in your head without words asking you to choose as each extends a hand is it possible to do an insight check to see if any of them are yeah Certainly. Not that I'm going to be all that good at it. Mm -mm. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Not true. 20 for 27. Uh, I'll do one on my own. I thought you were going to do one too. I was just waiting till. <laughs> Brown's got that look on his face. He knows exactly what's up. Natural two. <laughs> Natural two. Um, yes, impressive. Prion, looking at these these faces, hearing these voices, you 
are able to close your eyes and something about this telepathic speech, you're almost able to listen past the words and hear their intentions speaking to you. Um, hard to describe to anyone, but um, there's just some sort of intuition that you've found listening to this telepathic or um, sort of mystical method of communication. From Dranzog, you think it's true that maybe some people were better off under his rule, but you get the sense that the fact that, that he did indeed take this land from others and was later awarded the right to it. From Mara, the knight, you sense a despair and rage, but rage is slowly eat aw eating away at the despair. And she is absolutely truthful when she says that this land was her birthright and was her family's before anyone else's. And from Theodora, the woman, love and sadness, sadness slowly, slowly trying to snuff out the warm love that this spirit has. You think... Uh, you, you, but you still feel a protective energy about her. You do think that either of these warrior spirits will offer you strength to defeat whatever lies below. But Theodora might offer something, might offer understanding and protection instead. I relay that information. I was going to pick the mother anyway, but... Same. <laughs> She's a little bit closer to the present that we've sort of got all tangled up in, so... Might be a little bit more useful to solving our immediate problems. The mother, then. Yeah. Is that spoken on behalf of the whole party? Aye, aye. The spirits of the other two ghosts seem to um, be released from this energy that the witch light has created, and they turn to one another as if instinctually about to fight one another, and then look at you. You hear Mara whisper the word traitors under her breath before diminishing into nothingness and then um uh uh um Dren Sorg. Dr yeah and then <laughs> thinking of the words not the name but yes and then Drensorg looks to you all and says um trespassers I'll brick you up within my walls and fades from view and Theodora also begins to fade, but not completely. She says, she walks just a bit forward. Thank you. I used to light this once a week. It's a custom until no, but no one came back. Well, not until the very end at least. You, why have you come to my home? The conflict between your son and effective daughter continues. And Cedra's rule over this land is corrupted. Dominic seeks to overthrow her and has enlisted our help. But it seems that the whole situation is a bit more complicated than that. She nods. It was our mistake to think we could just forget the past. 
not teach it to them and not expect it to, and expect it not to repeat itself. They came back and, well, the heart of this house does lie at the bottom of the tower, along with its, the first two beginning of the feud. Cedra and Dominic have been swept up in it. You must... I fear that... I fear it's barely them. I don't know if anything remains of them yet, but if their spirits are still alive there, please try to free them from... from this hunger below. You will find no allies. Not now that you've spurned both of them, but I can offer you my blessing when you go all the way below to the caverns beneath. I'll be with you at the heart. Have faith. I in our bedroom, behind the, um, behind the, uh, the mantle, amulets, wear them, and she fades from view. Hmm. I believe you guys have already found those two. Um... There, I found an amulet. I don't think we all got amulets. Oh, uh, that was my mistake then. There were a number of them um, oh, that you found. The, or the there might have been a ones? spot that we mixed. Yes. Okay. You definitely said one, so maybe Oops. there are more. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Well, you get an amulet and you get an amulet. You put the amulet in water out. and it multiplies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and you feel no effects from putting them on. They don't seem particularly magical. Um, though Melvin, uh, Zier Detect Magic would have shown they d there is sort of the same magic that would be present in a holy symbol. Um, but nothing more than that. And with that, um, the witch light flickers on, and you hear rumblings beneath within the house. Sean, are you muted? Anybody else think we have a limited amount of time to do whatever it is we need to do here? I... Probably. Did anyone else hear that rumbling just now? Oh, yeah. Let's see oh, about okay. it then. I was hoping I was imagining it. Yeah. Let's try. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. I lay down. Down to down, the down. creepy place that was originally bricked off and is now suddenly yeah. open. Not weird at all. Down all the way to the first floor, then you go. Indeed. Whoop. All right. And over here lies an entrance to tower. Moving through this um, this room, this gallery that you previously smashed a statue in, reveals this dark tower base. The wind, um, though you don't see any sort of... Uh, actual windows in it there, there's this sensation of wind cascading through um, and moaning and howling as if it is blowing past windows high in a castle maybe just a oral memory of what used to be here and in this corner the wall appears to be bleeding eee trickling down from the bricks and pooling down the floor. 
Prion, your axe tingles when you feel this, when you see this. It feels almost like drawn to it almost magnetically. Okay. And even though you can't see it particularly well, there is a stairway leading up and then just behind it, there's a stairway leading down. Yeah. Down then I. That's maybe maybe we should said. go up first. Okay. See what's up no. there. I think we don't have time for that. Can Dahl just take a quick peek and see if there is anything up there? Fine. Dahl zips up. Okay, Dahl flies up up and up to about three floors and at the very top of the tower yes precious um feels the <laughs> same kind of repelling force but doll is able to get all the way up but it's just a little spot in the middle of the room this time that doll seems to be abjured from and there is a symbol of a raven etched into the ground in chalk. And in the middle of it is a gleaming set of armor. Fascinating. So maybe we do go up then. Debating whether or not Dahl has anything about it because Nether wants to get on with this. <laughs> So Dull comes back down and <sighs> there's armor up there. I don't think we have time. Or I think we'll be well, punished if we don't hurry. We did find an axe that belongs to Jansorg. Right. Mara had armor. Maybe that's a relic of hers. You really want something that belonged to someone so vicious? No, I don't. I'm 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 fine with one item that belongs to a creepy ghost in the party. Or actually, I'm not like super fine with it. But let's let's just not let's not take it to two. I'm actually with you on this one. All right, it's my axe. We we could always okay, just... okay Prion, keep your panties on. <laughs> we could, we could always just grab them and put them in the bag of holding and not use it. I mean, there's Saran. More, there's more to life than just grabbing everything you can get your hands on. Saran always already has her shiny armor. Who who else is going to like? It, it seems like dividing it could be the a... spoils before the task is done. No, it, it just seems like it could be an interesting uh, mm -hmm. academic pursuit to to study the possession of certain objects by ghosts of previous owners. That's all. Did uh, did Nether say anything about the raven that Dahl saw? Uh, I don't think neither would have thought to say it. Damn. She doesn't, she doesn't, to do with the she raven, doesn't know please. anything. She doesn't know anything about religion. She wouldn't have. <laughs> she wouldn't have mentioned it. Let's just if, if if we need to keep moving, we can keep moving. That's all. That's all right. I'll I'll take a look at uh, at Prion's axe at some point and see what's going on with that. I guess. Okay. I'm not um, capable of stopping anyone. I just think it's a bad idea. And we heard the opinion and we're respecting it. All right. Let's everyone just keep your heads and we'll go downstairs. What happens if we defeat this and then the house disappears? And then it's gone? Then we're out of suit of armor. <laughs> I agree. But Get it bigger priorities, like staying alive and getting back home. Okay. Hi. Right. Sounds like downward is the answer. Down the stairs. Down it is then. Goblin town. You said while pointing up. Yes. <laughs> this is my, uh, we're on the move pose. <laughs> That's the questing. Wee. The stairs curve down to where the tower is 
buried by the earth. Much of the floor here has fallen away, uh, and it is darkness, absolute darkness below. And um, as you guys talk, um, you hear your voices echoing strangely up from this pit as if there's a cavern um, that you're already in and the sound is just reverberating back up. And except Inaris, your voice is without an echo in this place. As everyone else's rings out, yours is muffled and unechoing. Well, that's strange. What? I would like to cast light on my brooch. So it okay. looks like a flashlight. The light springs into existence. Um, another... <clears throat> start thinking uh, something about... Um, the ho your home in Salt Marsh keeps coming to mind. The bridge. Your little hole from before. The bridge. And then the seat on the council. And these images just keep flashing into your mind. And, uh, like in a homesick sort of way? Or... Uh, in like, like involuntarily, you are getting these visions. And then you hear this voice in the back of your head. Do you really think they're going to let you rule that place? You of all creatures. I think, I think they're stupid and they, they underestimate me. Yes. How will you show them otherwise? I have plans. Who is, who is speaking? The one who would give you salt marsh. I would make your home your domain. I will need more information than that. Come below and see. Nether stops. I'm hearing a strange voice in my head offering me things I want. Is anybody else hearing that? Nay. Yet. It's not being an asshole to you, is it? I got a distinct vampiric vibe from it. It like reminded me of that. Preying upon your insecurities kind of voice? Because Serene flipped a fuck a while ago. Yes, that's exactly what it feels like. Okay. If she were here right now. <laughs> oh my god. It takes it got some emotional time. <laughs> she's just in a corner, you know. She's recovering in the safe room. It's fine. <laughs> uh, she's going and getting the armor. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. The stairs are slippery though. It'll take a it'll take a few trips. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> um, okay. I just want to let everyone know right now that I'm not inclined to take anything that it offers. I already have arrangements. So does my what? voice still sound weird? Mm-hmm. What? 
Good job. Sounds normal. No, it's not ringing the same way that so, you would expect in a space like this. DM, when you mentioned the bridge and stuff like that, was that a specific reminder of my home, or was it the nature of this area in the same way that the bridge and where my home was, was I felt a connection there that I didn't feel somewhere else. Is it a similar feeling here? You No, it was visual. Not visual, I guess, because for Nether, but you... Right. Um, where it was almost hallucinations of home. Okay. It was showing you moments where you felt like you owned something of Salt Marsh and those moments of success and very much keying in on that desire to be, um, to, you know, uh, to grow in your, um, right. uh, ownership. My desires, so. right. Uh, the... Is is Anaris the only one here who's got? She's not the only one here who's got elvish blood, right? Fl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's not what it is. Pretty Although, elf, yeah. wait, are you a full elf, elf, Anaris? No, she's half. Okay. You guys wouldn't know that, but. Okay. Why would her voice be muffled to nobody else's? That's really weird. Is there a way I can, like, investigate? The muffliness? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, it's try, weird. sing a, sing a scale and see if you can find a formant that is, that, that I just imagine that I mean, like, she does honestly, sing Mariah things. might do that. <laughs> Wait, do we need to, it's like singing do we need to scope glove. her? Do we need to scope her? Okay? <laughs> All I don't right. have the proper tool. Pause the adventure. We're going to the ENT. <laughs> anyway, um, we gotta figure I, this out. Well, um, what's different about her? I mean, she's originally from underground. She worships yeah. a specific deity. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. are really the only two things that I could think of that those are the best things. come to mind. As you know. Is like, the Raven Queen here? Why don't the tree just go through the door and hit something? I'm going to examine the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We stop examining um, Anaris's muffiness. <laughs> muffiness? <laughs> 14. What, what are you guys investigating? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Is the uh, door so trapped? Busted. You said it's fine. Um... <laughs> Iron Door, Mariah, as you go to touch it, it slams open, <laughs> almost knocking you aside <laughs> okay. and reveals a larger chamber within. Watch your temper. Uh, there is a crumbled wall, which seems to have collapsed, um, where this looks like a regular wall. This is not, this is no longer present. I My forward. temper is just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will head down through the cave. I am right, right. on his heels. This seems to be a um, more ancient portion. Uh, this wall doesn't match any of the woodwork from before, but it does match the stonework of the tower. And over here, you see a large area connected to the wine cellar where you're at first, full of wooden crates. Dirt, to dirt be, too, right, DM? Uh, you don't know, know what's I... in there right now, but uh, it's definitely um, a storage room. Please, no. What is this Please, at the no. moment? This is a broken wall. A crumbled wall. Okay, I will. Looks in. to match the original features of the castle, most likely. So now there's just a deep, deep hole there. That's I all you see. That's, walk in, uh, and I cast protection from evil and good on myself. Okay. I walk into the middle of the room. Maris, you... see something. Knocking over the boxes. Is Anara still muffy? She's I not. Still... Hmm. Oh. Weird. Preon, yes. you knock one of the boxes. You hear some stuff shuffle within. Some stuff, not a 
as in creature, but just things fall over, kind of knock around on the inside. That awesome. sounds like maybe Sounded it's full like of creatures, uh, full of ceramic or something like that. I was like, it's ceramic definitely... vampires. Ceramires. I start hacking the boxes open. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Preon just this time it's Preon losing Yikes. his temper as um, as uh, um, he knocks a bunch of boxes open and they're just full of one is uh, full of ceramic uh, bottles one is full of decayed foodstuffs of some kind that's just kind of disintegrated into a, uh, a pile of dust really um, it's just an old forgotten storage room Nars, I don't think that that's the right way. Yeah, wasn't Did there you... a hole in the tower? There's a hole in the floor, yes. Yeah. Oh. oh okay. We just have to yeet ourselves the down. Rare floor, raglan floor. There's a hole in the floor. In this. I go back then. How deep is it? I pick up a pebble <clears throat> and I drop it down. Um, you hear it fall you think if you had to estimate about 40 feet movie well, we got rope right i got rope eh? All right. nothing to tie yep. to I pull out some pittons and my hammer and i'll start yeah. hammering it into okay. the floor while okay. he's doing that, may I have Dahl uh, do an investigation check on this oddly shaped dead end here? Yes. Which experience has shown me is sometimes where a secret passage is. All right, now, Nene, sing this note. Uh... <laughs> Why am I still doing this? I'm clearly not muffled in here. Now, you, as you move back into this room. Yeah, when we're in the tower. <laughs> so that's going to yeah. be a dirty 20 for Dahl. Uh, it looks like a, um, even though it's, uh, looks purposefully cut, it is just collapsed old stone. The L that meets with the tower here is just kind of, um, remnants of the older structure that was here long ago. This would have been an old wall, uh, from the castle, but no longer got it. It's collapsed. Prion, knocking a python in, uh, you feel pretty secure. Um, part of you is worried about collapsing more of the floor, but for now, it seems okay. Okay, I'll test it. If it's solid enough, I will climb down. All right. Melvin, As you're not you one guys... of those wizards that can just, like, yeet yourself off of things and, like, float to safety, are you? Um... I could, but it, it uses up some of my resources. Oh for no, the day. I wasn't suggesting you use it. I was just curious, like for future reference. Yeah, yeah, I, I have, I have the ability to slow people's descents off of cool. the high locations and cool. for long falls and stuff like that. Um, Good to know. And I'm gonna follow directly after Prion to try to give him some light and me some light. <laughs> But for him, but also for me. I will make sure Nether goes down before me. I'd like to make sure she makes it down safely. Okay. Right. As you all go down one after one. You land in this spot amongst a bit of rubble. Uh oh. And a strange, strange sight awaits you down in this cavity. There's nothing natural Bacchi. about this formation and certainly nothing natural about the amber light flooding from a large crystal in the corner. Uh, petrified figures lie trapped among the pale stone walls. Their faces are contorted in terror. Deeper, the floor forms a crater-like depression filled with inky muck. From the center of the pit rises this jagged amber monolith. A faint glow issues from within, backlighting a vague, elusive, vague, elusive shape. It's Minnesotan pronunciation right there coming at you. <laughs> and in the center of the room, a young man stands frozen in 
amidst a motion of turning as if he's about to glance behind over his shoulder. With his body, he's concealing a piece of paper, which he has begun to tear into. Behind him, also frozen, is a woman in a striking red dress holding aloft a jet black obsidian obelisk about the size of a paperweight. She is bringing it down forcefully against the back of his head. The two are frozen at the moment of this impact and a thin sheet of glassy amber covers them. Two strands of dark energy like fibers of soot and ash emanate from their chest, drawing a dark thread between them and the amber monolith ahead. Wizardy stuff. Melvin, what does it mean? There's a piece of paper, right? I'm going to gingerly creep forward and try to get a better view of what he's holding. Um, you can see um, as uh, uh, as this, whatever is coating them is looks to be the same material sort of that this mm -hmm. Uh, this amber obelisk is made of. It's just coating them ever so thinly, and so you can actually read it. Mm. And it says... It's a, it seems to be a note to him that he's reading down here. It says, Cedra's side of the family has fallen into disgrace. It's addressed to Dominic. Oh, not... It's addressed to Theodora. Um... It's hidden from most of her family, but our eyes and ears within their household have confirmed it. All Dominic needs to do is say nothing. Cedra's house will collapse and he will inherit all of it. In all likelihood, the Chancellor will elevate him to the Council of Brilliance. Your efforts will no were noble, but unnecessary in the end. Signature? <clears throat> Oh, and then uh, one last line. I'm sending Dominic to fetch you back to the city. It's time our families took their rightful place, and you should be by my side. And it is signed, the Lord Donaire. Okay. Hmm. Um I'd like to take a close look at these statues. Um, in particular, I'm interested in the the woman and the paperweight. Uh, but generally, it looks ex I, it yeah. looks exactly like the one you found before. And these are less statues. These look like human beings encased in a glass like sheet of amber. Yeah, that's. Um, does this look like the Cedra Donaire that we saw at the banquet? Um, yes, her features do, um, resemble that, and despite the icon here, she is not wearing a mask. She is, though, hiding her face with, um, a bit of her cloak as she comes up behind to strike him on the back of the head. Her face is frozen in a, um, an expression of anger, um, and his is, um... Uh, confusing expression, but one of suspicion as he was just tearing this document and looking behind him. Huh. <laughs> I wonder if this is the, the real Cedra and Dominic. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting. Is she would obviously be threatened by the contents of this note. So her striking him, that makes sense to me. If she found out what was in it and that there was a threat to her ability to remain close to power, then her striking Dominic and taking him out of the picture, that makes a lot of sense. But he looks like he's tearing it in half. Do you think maybe he wouldn't have done that? Kind of what it seems like. Yeah. Having second thoughts. Yeah. Hmm. 
Is it possible to take that obelisk thing out of her hand? Uh, you could try. Does it look like it's encased in the same amber? Like it, it's got mm -hmm. it's oh, all their whole it. figures. The even the letter itself is frozen there, and and the the, yeah. uh, the thing as well. Okay, probably uh, not then. I try to take it out of her hand. Okay, Brian, you touch it. It is icy, icy cold. Uh, please make a Constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. As the cold seems to run up your arm. Uh, do it with evil? advantage okay. if you have. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought it get. I did it with disadvantage. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. You take no damage, uh, but um, you feel your hand is almost sluggish after touching it, and it felt rock solid, like the hardest steel that you have felt. Um, and as you touch it, um, the amber flares up in light, and you can see floating above it now um, the same woman you saw before in the armor. Uh, excuse me, I'll reveal her. But translucent. Her face is marred horribly as if she has been living in a perpetual state of fury for years. Her eyes glow with, uh, with an amber light and um, her mouth is gaping open, hanging almost down to her, um, almost down to her sternum, the jaw just dislodged and hanging. She looks towards all of you and um, with an accusatory point, points to all of you with an accusatory gesture. Betrayers, all of you, I condemn you. And then above you, you hear heavy footsteps coming, which thump, thump. Uh, trespassers on my land in my home. And then you hear this quiet voice speaking almost from your amulet um, that says, they are coming, but I am with you. As right amidst this hole, <laughs> landing down is an uh, undead looking massive creature uh, wielding uh, what looks to be um, just a, uh, uh, um, a a piece of of, of uh, the obsidian that you guys left behind cracked from the statue just this huge maul he points to you Prion and looking at you he says I thought you an ally a capable warrior, but you are just a thief. All of you thieves. You will be forgotten in this place. And it steps and begins to walk towards you. And um, the uh, spirit of Mara then on the other side um, says, Arise, my knights and drive these people from my lands. And you see all of the bones bricked into this wall begin to slowly twitch and claw themselves out from their imprisonment. My friends, it's time for us to roll some dun, 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 initiative. Dun, 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 Sorry, I may have cleared someone's roll by accident. It was me. I'll add you back. Thanks. Thanks. I'll add you back. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Back to the past samurai, Jack. Mm. Come on. There we go. This is gonna be rough. Might be. It is 
fighting both of the spirits, as was the way um, the Adora. But you guys feel, as all of you are wearing the amulets, I assume you all put them on, yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. In this place, you feel yourselves blessed by Theodora with um, you all have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage while in this pit while wearing the nice. um, amulets. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. <laughs> nice. Very good. These enemies have arisen. Are you all on the turn tracker? Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, Capitan. Okay. Uh, yes. ah, indeed, it, we are back. <laughs> and it is combat time as the spirits of this house, the most ancient spirits, the remnants of the first betrayal and the first um, blood wars of this ancient castle have arisen and are attacking the characters. And so we have rolled initiative and they are fighting for their lives. The walls, the bricked walls are starting to crumble around them as skeletal hands reach out, um, reaching for some sort of life having been shut up in a wall for so long. Amontillado. And it is um, Talisa's turn to begin us. Finally Alcohol aged where? Spirits. <laughs> finally aged spirits, not I would fall spirits. for that in a heartbeat. Finely aged, yeah. Finely aged wines with, yeah, of uh, the sherry variety. Spirits, anyway. finely aged spirits. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't want to go first. Well, you've uh, had Talisa, 10 minutes you... to think about it. Oh, I okay. was You're doing fine. homework. <laughs> She's thinking about calculus and limits. I was. I hate limits. Unlimited. Now we're going to do that again. Okay. No, I will come... I will do something. First and most important, I'm gonna move <laughs> away from him. First and foremost. Okay. Uh, you do provoke an attack of opportunity with that. Yes. Sugar right. tit. <sighs> Why did Sean say yes? I'm gonna die. Means that Sugar I could. Tit. I could do it. <laughs> Means that I could get away. I have from rolled him now. a 16 to hit. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. I'm an 18. Aha. It's like, oh no. Dun, dun, dun. Remind me to never roll that high again <laughs> for initiative. What a burden. I know. You guys are supposed to do all the action, and then I come up at the end and heal people, and then like throw. All right, Talise, you've uh, you've moved to the wall. What are we doing? Well, to, well, <laughs> to the window. Well, to Talise the wall. is taking five hours for her go. We have got a hype train going. So. Hello. Sorry. Come on. Thank you for the Carry support. On. The higher the hype train, the more we give away at the end. This hype train is unlimited. <laughs> I don't have. I it really <laughs> hope you're happy. Uh, all right. <laughs> what you do until he's? Okay. I would like to cast Sacred Flame at this guy. Oop. At guy. one of Mara's soldiers. Okay. Nah. Sacred Flame. My deck save is eleven, which fails. Ha ha. Seven radiant damage. Looks like. <laughs> Eaten on flame, flame. Yeah. Non flame flame as the -flame -flame. radiance of Vulcan penetrates even this far down into the cavity. Anything else for Talise? A cavity? Absolutely not. A cavity. Um, this guy now looks around, um, stares at Nether and then smiles. Something about yeah. accepting the mercy feels like it was a good idea, and then turns towards. Yes. Inaris. Oh, no. Uh, excuse me. Turns towards Melvin. Melvin, please make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I have not rolled above a six. 
this entire game so far. <laughs> That's my highest roll. That's oh, a nine dear. total. I know the feeling. <laughs> um, so you guys see a couple bricks begin to break loose on the wall, and he looks at you and smiles and says, Become part of my home, kid. And they fly at you. You fly to here and impact the wall and then are suddenly bricked up against the wall. You are blinded and restrained and take 37 points of bludgeoning damage <gasps> from the impact. Which Ooh, you are resistant to. I am resistant. Okay, so that's going to be... Oh, that's oh God. Uh, Wait, uh, 17. 17? Yeah, okay, thank you. Math is hard. All right. And then he steps towards Aeneas. 18, sorry. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, that's its turn. Mariah. You've He's just seen people. Melvin <laughs> fly towards a wall and be bricked up within. He's just gone. Like... Yeah, there was a, there are little visible. holes like you could see his eyes yeah. wide with panic, and then one of the little hands on the wall just <gasps> boop, placed oh. one last brick in front of him, and his voice was cut off from you. Oh fuck, the wall. kid! <laughs> I hope you're okay. Just um, another brick in the wall. I've got nothing that I can help with that. Um, damn, <laughs> that's a problem. Um. I am considering my options. What's the greater threat? I don't know. Probably Dranzorg, at least for now. Um, to go and undead, take damage from psychic stuff. I hope so. Um, let's upcast. Dissonant whispers on Dranzorg. Dissonant whispers on Dranzorg. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to come through. Hold on here. Um, it'll be another die of damage on top of that. Um, a wisdom save, please. Okay. Uh, I have a 15. All right, well, take half damage. Um, so seven. 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 Seven points of damage, and um, golly, there is no safe place here. Thank you. Um, now they get out of trouble quick. Uh, have a bardic inspiration from me. You're welcome. Ooh, thank you. Love you. Yes, Bye. I will I'm going to go that. stand over here. <laughs> and we will pass the turn over to Nether. Actually, All no, right. I'm going to have to go over there. Nether is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to here. She's going to cast. She brings her hands together and then spreads them apart and as she does another rift appears in this air with uh, water dripping from it she says Twatha tell Nuanda Twatha and she's going to summon Zorb Zorb the, okay. the fae uh, who is going to appear in this square uh, I think we'll use beaver for now this is the actually this is actually the oxalotl that appears sort of goes, and is going to try and free uh, Prion, not Prion, uh, Melvin. Use their action to try and get the rocks off of Melvin. Okay, uh, yeah, possible. we have Ox all making an athletics check. All right. I think this is just going to be a straight dex check. Athletics so that is a strength. strength. Oh, athletics check. Okay, well, so I rolled a 16, so strength plus one is going to be 17. Does it okay, feel 17. six? Yeah, I'm going to use my D6 inspiration on this, I think. Yeah. 
So a total of uh, 19, right? No, 16, 17, 18, yeah, 19. Okay, yeah, with that roll, um, pulling up just is able to go for the, uh, you know, unstacking the top bricks would be easier, but they're able to go for the middle, which are much more difficult to pull out, but they tumble down around Melvin. Melvin, you are uh, freed from this uh, brick prison by the right. impressive check from the creature. The Zorp Zorp is then going to use their bonus action to Misty Step to here and create a globe of darkness on top of Nether. It expands its five feet, just five feet around Nether. That's part um, of its Misty Step. Yeah, that's a special cool. thing it gets to do with Misty Step. And then uh, Nether's bonus action. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Doll is going to fly to here and... And around right there, it's going to whirl in the air and pull out a little tiny arrow, shoot it across the um, the expanse at the um, white-looking creature over there. Yes, um, at, uh, at Mara. <laughs> Be really cool if they could. If they were susceptible to poison, but they so are not. So that's going to be a 11 to hit. Will not hit, unfortunately. Oh, will not hit. And then Dahl will continue flying and end their turn here. Tinks off of their spectral armor. Um, that is nether done. Cool. Um, so, so familiars, I usually have share turn on combat, but um, it's pretty specifically says on the summons that they take their turn after yours. So as we go forth. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. I just. It's fine. I, it it doesn't make any sort I, of I difference. Knew, so. I knew that Dahl wasn't going to be yeah. all that effective. So I wanted to. Come on. Do, do your summons effect. in order. Order of operations, sorry. Sean. Come sorry. on. Sorry. Uh, got it. <laughs> I got it. I'm not. Prion, it's your turn. Uh, Eolac flies down. I charge forward. With the axe. With my axe. Da -da -da. 24 to hit. Oh, that hits. Uh, this is a booming blade. Da -da. So that is seven. That's 11 damage. And then I take my action. For only a 10 to hit. Ten will not get through. That's me dumb. Okay. Um, so you're doing two-handed? Always. <clears throat> gotcha. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to there, and I'll tell Inaris to run behind me. Okay. Inaris, it is your turn. Awesome. I do want to get away from this little... Um, did you did you disengage from it, or do you have a feature that disallows... I had more movement. Uh, um, features? I think I... Are you intentionally <laughs> provoking? Yeah, intentionally provoking. But he's already had his reaction, so that's why I already took her. a reaction. It has so. not. It took its action... Uh, the first opportunity Had attack it took was Talisa's turn, which is yeah. the first of the round, and then it had its turn next. It hasn't okay. taken it. Then I would have provoked. Okay. Uh, 28 to hit. It hits. 34 points of slashing damage. Is that Could with you please make a wisdom saving throw? Uh, it is not. I have a 25. Oh, yes. Uh, what did you say after that, sorry? Wisdom saving throw. Do I have advantage against that? Yes. Uh, 23. Alright, you're good. And how much damage was it? It was 34 points halved since you're resistant. 17. 17. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> and now it is... Daenerys' turn. Yay! Okay. Can I get away from it without provoking attack of opportunity? 
Yes, because it has taken its attack of opportunity. <laughs> yes. So I, I am going to go to Prion, take off running. And as my attack, I'm going to turn and yell with a snarl and drow, Tupa Kuchka, and cast Word of Radiance. Uh, Kuch- Word of Kuchka. Radiance, so you would do that before you left the range. Um, okay. Constitution saving throw. So your your yes. Ewok is really good. Uh, actually, that's Bulgarian. <laughs> Luka, 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 I have a Luka, decent Luka, 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 uh, constitution, but I've rolled a six. Yes. So seven radiant damage. All righty. Keep moving behind me. All right. Uh, bonus action. I was going to see if I can also... Uh, I wanted to know, can I do Shield of Faith? Does it matter that I did a cantrip before? Nope. Yes. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith yep, you around can do a bonus my... action spell. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Then I will Shield of Faith around myself. On yourself? Okay. Yes. Plus two to my AC for the duration. All right. Um, Mara walks up, and some of you may have guessed. She looks at each and every one of you um, from this spot and yells at the top of her lungs <gasps> Betrayers! And um, this wail is piercing to your ears as her wrath emanates through your body. Uh, Please everyone make wisdom constitution saving throws with advantage except uh, for Nether. Nether. Uh, You said that she looked at all of us. I don't imagine that her yell has anything to do with line of sight. It does not. Okay, just check. Natural 20. Come on. Nat 20. Also received a 20. Don't know why that whispered to you, Jim, but I rolled a Disabled 17. I, gotcha. got a I think you 20. have your thing enabled on yeah, roll 20, maybe. Yep. That's I'm gonna I got a You're in DM mode, which is fine. Yeah. You have all saved. It, uh, I was worried. Ooh, thank God. Um, you are going to take nine psychic damage as her condemn, excuse me, nine force damage as her condemnation shakes through your body, but that is the extent of it. So all of us, She yeah. then orders her knights to attack. All of us take nine, yeah? Yes. Okay. You all succeeded. Doll is flying up high. Or at least as high as he can get. Okay. Um, Dahl and Eolak would need to make the save as well. Well, regardless, Dahl, Dahl okay. will, will, even if Dahl passes, Dahl will die from the yeah, damage. Same. Okay. Poof, poof. Uh, and your summon as well. <coughs> All right. Uh, do, do, do. Um,. Uh, Melvin, I have a 16 and a 9 to attack you, and Talisa, I have a 23 and a 15. The 16 meet be- meets beats. Okay. And the 23 for me. Con save. Dirty 20. <laughs> All right. Uh, he takes just the 9, then 11 points of slashing damage to Melvin <coughs> and to Talise, 13 points of slashing damage as it you are resistant to, so you can have it. Just a reminder of that. Thank you for that. Mm. Elvin, what has happened to you since the time yeah. of this initiative? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like this combat so far, guys. I'm not enjoying this. Um, 
At least it's not on the water, kid. Uh, it's true, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna uh, flick a little bead of um, of ink right over here into this square, and um, a small uh, explosion of Recording radiant light. Recording in progress. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you did you just say donuts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> donuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was me. I was trying to hit a different button and it hit record. <laughs> yeah, because I still have host powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what how you night. do pop-ups. I don't Usually know not. my own power, guys. <laughs> he has the power. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you, you, you were saying, Melvin. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, cast a radiant fireball, so I'll flick a little bead of um, ink over to um, this location here is the one I said. Yeah. Which should just hit, just miss me and hit everybody, all three of the, the enemies, I believe. I guess you could, you, that would probably fit in there, huh? Um, let me pull out the, the template. Yes, please. Just to check. A light ball. Um... I salute the sun. <laughs> sun salutation. I like it. Boom. Yeah. I. Uh... And this time I'm not hitting any of my allies. It's great. Wow. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> How you've learned. Okay. Deck saves cha, cha, cha. the soldiers. I'm not a big kid now. I have a 17 in the six, 17 up here. And against Mara herself, has a 20. So 14 and then 29 to the one right next to you. And that's that's radiant damage, not fire. Perfect. Oh, Double checking. Oh, oh. Not fire, fire. All right. Anything else for Melvin's turn? Uh, I don't really like where I am, but I feel like if I move, I'm in trouble. So, um, you are a little bit stuck. In fact, <laughs> can I can I move sideways, or is that a wall in my way? Can um, I move to here. There's a wall there. You would have to squeeze, but you could, I mean, squeezing, it's just going to be difficult terrain to get through there. I'd, I'd like to do that if possible. That would be okay. great. I'm just going to move to there and stop. Okay. Way to use that magic. Talise, back to you. Oh, Yay. Um, sorry. At initiative count 20, Every arm begins to reach out from the wall. Anyone within five feet of the exterior walls, please make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Okay. Don't like that. Great. Damn it. Shit. Yeah, great. Great. This is good. Uh oh.
All right, do is that just the three of you, I guess? I guess. All right. Uh those of you there take 5 points of bludgeoning damage and are restrained mm. as the hands pull you in. And you see as you are restrained, it, they begin to place bricks around your feet oh, nope. as if nope. slowly starting to enclose you in. <laughs> Now it is Talisa's turn. Um, Melvin, you obviously, you saved with a 19. So it was just Talisa and Mariah that took the damage and are restrained. Okay. No, so. uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah. It's your turn. Um, okay. I will cast Aura of Vitality. Yay! 30 foot spear. Oh, what does that do? Um, it creates a 30 foot bubble around me with energy uh, with healing radiating. Um, and I can use a bonus action to heal someone in addition to myself. Uh 2d6. Mm. Not an addition to you. You can, like, yeah, including. You can choose. Oh, yeah. oh, I misread the including. Yeah. yeah. Either way, Good job, I'm still though. casting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to use that bonus action this turn to do so? Uh, I absolutely do, and I would like to give that to Prion. Okay. Roll the two d six. Ah. That's fine with me too. Whoever wants no 2d6 rolling healing, take it. <laughs> I have made okay. whatever you're giving it to. So. Take it. it. <laughs> I, know. it should be. I, th I, I think it should be Melvin too. Yeah. That's what's like the squishiest clothies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melvin's hurting. Good bed. All right. Yeah, so seven there. points to Melvin, it sounds like. Anything else to Lise? Um, no, because if I do anything else, I'm gonna trigger that stupid guy. So no. Okay. Not this time. Oh, you're also held in place. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's its turn. Uh, it looks around. Uh, it is going to look to Prion and the bricks will start to rattle and it will try to brick you up. Please make a dexterity saving throw. Da -da -da. Ten. Uh -oh. It throws you to this corner. And Is it magically was trying to restrain me? Uh... Interesting. Yes, it is. You have a ring of free action, don't you? I do. I'll stay where I am. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can it still move you? Uh, if it's trying to restrain me and stuff. The power. Well, it will still throw you against the wall, but it will not. You. The bricks will not be able to form around you. They kind of are slick and keep tumbling at your feet. You still take uh, the halved 33 points of damage, but... Um, then he's going to walk over here towards Mariah, who's being held against a wall. Okay. He takes... Good. He takes 12 damage. Thunder. Ouch. Cool. Mariah, it's your turn. Oh, he's just standing threateningly in front of me? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I, uh, I look up at him, and I just go, Bye. And I... <laughs> poof out of existence as I miss you step across the room. Nice. Not next to the wall again. <laughs> that seems like a bad place to be. Uh, yeah, let's go over there. It's going to be a, a Talise Nene Mariah sandwich. Um, and I will 
look over towards, uh, oh, who's particularly threatening right now? Um, All of them. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, towards Mara. Um, oh, gosh, I'm too stressed to make an insult. You're really ugly. I liked you better with the armor on. Make a wisdom save. You'll never be as cool as a vampire. <laughs> I've, I've rolled a natural one. Take five points of psychic damage. And uh, disadvantage on your next attack roll. Imagine that. Anything else? It's bonus action cantrip. Probably done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for me. Bye. Okay. Bye. Um, oh, it makes me miss Liz. Bye. Uh, anyway, uh, Nether, your turn. We will destroy the knights of your rival, she says from the darkness as it disappears. And then Zorpzorp is going to come running over here. Is going to wait. Wait, she has to use her action first. Sorry, she's going to uh, attack. The last thing she saw was the uh, skeleton things moving over to where uh, Melvin was. So she's going to shoot two Eldritch blasts that way, at disadvantage because she's blind again. Mm hmm. So that would have hit twenty. Oh yeah, that hits. Right, so that is four points of. Oh, I don't know why it rolled two T10, but it should be just the one. It's four points of damage from that blast. Second one. Mm -hmm. Yep, twenty-five would have hit. Instead, it's a fifteen, which is a hit. All right, this one does another four points of. Force damage. Zorp Zorp then attacks <coughs> with the Zorp Zorp's. Uh, Zorp? Zorp? Her Zorpal blade. Uh, it is, in fact, a short sword. Goes oh, Zicker Zack. It goes Zicker Zack. Who's Zack? Hey, with a natural 20. Wow. Uh, and that Ooh. is going to bow, bow, do... bow, bow, bow. Let's see. So that's five points. Right. So 13 points of piercing damage. And... Six points of force damage. Then... Torp, torp. Misty steps back to here and casts the globe of darkness again around Nether. Aha! Cool. That's uh, Prion. Um, I will move. Oh, Prion! Please make a uh, another wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, do you say? Yes. Wisdom. And this is not um, this is not against evil. I made a mistake there. Oh, so well, nineteen. <clears throat> okay, you are fine. I move to there and attacketh with a bonus action booming blade first for nineteen to hit. Uh, that hits. That is... Da, 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 14 damage. Okay. My action hit. For 16 to hit. What, where's the bonus action coming from? I've got a bonus action, didn't I? Booming Blade is a, is a, um, an action. Yeah, not for someone with a war caster, it's not. For war magic. No. What? Let me I'm read confused. 
War magic. When you use your... Oh, wait a minute. Interesting. When you use okay, your when action you use your to action. cast a, ta a cantrip, you can make one attack as a bonus action. Sorry, I got it the wrong way around. Okay. Flipped around. Yeah. Cool. Got him. 16 to hit. Uh, hits. 14 damage. Ouch. I'm going to action surge. Uh, uh, don't get the bonus action again on action surge, do you? No. No, just another action. Okay. Da -da. 18 to hit. Mm hmm. And 17 to hit. Yes. Fourth, 20 damage. Wow. Impressive turn. Um, this thing is starting to look a bit haggard and uh bits of its uh body are beginning to fall apart good Inaris. oh right i want to try a thing i have not used this since i have had Inaris. i want to do channel divinity turn on dead as an action, you present your holy symbol and speak a prayer, censoring the undead. Each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet of you must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, okay. turn for one minute or until it takes any damage. And I can only use the dash action or try to escape from the effect. <laughs> Does her muffledness affect this at all? Shh. Turn <laughs> muffly undead. Does not. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> you now have to speak uh, as me in that voice for the rest of the game. Wow. Like she turned into a contha. We have a 16 from Big Guy, and uh, Mara has rolled a natural one. Yes. And then the her knights. Bye, bitch. <laughs> seem to be resolute in their decision to attack. While they doubted her in life, there is no doubt about their purpose in death, and they seem to be immune to your words of turning. <clears throat> right, that's that's fine. They can do that. I also have a bonus action. Where did it go? I spare the dying. Is it going to do anything? I think that's all it can do. So I'm just going to stay where I'm at and not move. Sean making squeaky sounds. He is. Yes, sorry. yes he is. Him. Love it. I'm, I'm always sorry. Like, I'm you're playing not with the cat. Things. I apologize. All right. Cool. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just gonna stand here so I can get advantage on my next round. Yeah. No movement Mara this round. runs away, floats away to the edge of the cavern right there, Brave and then her Brave knights Brave continue. Mara ran away. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Uh, continue their attack. Um, Melvin gets hit with a 21 and a 25. Sorry, sir. Yep, those will both hit. <laughs> Six damage and then 15 of the slashing variety. Okay. Oh. 10 damage. Elise. I've got a 23 and a 14. 10 points of damage to ya. It is oh, oh. halved. Remember, these are dealing slashing damage. <clears throat> Very good. Melvin. Um, I, I, I assume that I would know this in character. Um, how long, or what, would it be an action to attempt to put something into a bag of holding or equivalent item? Um, it'd be an item interaction if it's like already available to you in your hand. Um, this, what if the I thing don't know, is alive and tries to resist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on. 
<laughs> I'd like to pull out the bagman's bag. Okay. And I'd like to attempt to shove this undead into the bagman's bag. Ooh. I understand where you're going with that, but, you know, a opening of a bag of holding is only so big. Okay. That's and this fine. is a lar this is a broad-shouldered knightly oh, creature. Okay. It's not okay. a uh, It's not just a skeleton. What no, you're looking like for is the bag of devouring. I mean, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll I'll, I'll, that I I like then. it unfortunately. <laughs> I'll put I'll, I'll I'll file that away for later. <laughs> uh, in that case, I will do the same thing I did last round because I think I can still hit all three of them. Um, she's, she's so I will. That's good, Carol. Yeah, but otherwise I'm mm. in trouble. So I am going to fireball again, radiant fireball, right there. Yep, I've got that as exactly twenty foot from everything. So, uh, so we'll do it. That. <clears throat> Deck saves coming in at five and fourteen from the soldiers. Both fail. And from her, I've got a 15. That is the save DC. Sadly. Right. 24 points of radiant damage. One next to you is starting to disintegrate away, but the others are looking okay. Or the other okay. one's looking okay. And, um... Um, yeah, I guess that's going to be, I'm going to step here, and that'll be the end of my turn. All right, on initiative count 20, anyone within five foot of the wall, please make a dexterity saving throw. I got a 14 this time. I have a 19 again. And I'm still restrained. <laughs> oh, Talise, if you are restrained, you make that save with disadvantage. Oh, poop on a... Can't have poop That's on redundant. <laughs> okay, I got a 14. <laughs> okay. Um, you are... You are... Um, still Double restrained listed. as you, is not <laughs> you have not freed yourself, but you are not bricked up any further by the moving hands. Uh, yeah, okay. Now it is your turn. You are just regular um, restrained. <clears throat> just as restrained as before. Um, I would like to not be restrained any longer. That's a... Uh... Is that a, is that strength? Athletics. Uh, yes, you could use your action to make an athletics check to try to break away. Okay, for a second, when I when you weren't answering, I thought maybe I'd frozen. Okay. No, 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 no. sorry. I was, uh, it was yeah. Peter who was frozen. I was frozen. It was the frozen Peter. All right, I got a 14. Uh, 14's enough, you are able to Shrug off these grasping hands, and you are free. That is your action. Do you have a bonus action or movement you would like to use? Bonus action. I would like to give Melvin 2d6 healing from the aura. Thank you. Hey, you did, wow. It's a concentration, right? Yep. Please make a constitution saving throw to see if you're able to continue concentrating. Concentrating. You wow. are concentrating. Yay! Anything else? Two d six. No. Did Did you want me to roll that two d six or? Yeah, I mean, I. You can if you want. Or eight you points. Want you? Thank you. Thank you very much. The you big creature not. looks at you, Prion, and says, "Tricky." And swings its axe at you twice. Yeah, disadvantage. 
Is that on top? Ah, indeed. Oh man. Um, I've a I have, oh there were some high numbers, but I have a fourteen and then a nineteen. I shield the nineteen. Okay. Mm. Anything else? Uh, that was my reaction. Oh, sorry. Anything else from me? Nope, I'm done. All right. Moriah. Yo! My, um... My spread of options here continues to be limited. Um... Melvin, how horrible do you look right now? Um, I mean, not good. Certainly less than half. Um, okay. All right, kiddo. Like a little more than a quarter. <laughs> a little, we'll, we'll waft a little song on the air for you here. I have 12 points of healing. Oh, thank you. And um, we will uh, then turn to consider the skeleton that is in front of um, uh, Talise here. And, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, the way that the remnants of your skin hang together upon your bones is just incredibly unseemly. Please roll me a wisdom save. How about 14. That is a failure. So you will take a hot total of five psychic damage and disadvantage on your next attack roll. Okay, noted. Which will bring us on to another... All right, another couple of Eldritch Blasts at the skeleton attacking Melvin. So that's going to be a 15. It's disadvantage, schmish advantage for nether today. That's right. Three points of force. All right. Still up? Uh huh. Once again. 17. Uh, Seven points of force. Yes. I don't know why it's rolling. I guess because I don't know why it's rolling both. 2d10. I don't, I don't know either. I, I, haven't, I don't see him, so it looks fine. It, yeah. It's All right. Rolling correctly. Yep. So seven points of force. Still up. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. All right. Yep. Then Zorp Zorp's going to Zorp Zorp their way over here again and is going to attack. Uh... So that shouldn't have been a disadvantage, which means I had another natural 20... <laughs> To hit, uh, uh, we go with left though, right? Or yes, yeah, left. Initially. Oh, right, yeah. of course. Yep, sorry. Yeah, twenty-four. Yep, of course. Sorry, sorry. Hits, <laughs> um, spears. So that's going to be a total of eight points of piercing damage. And armor is beginning to come off. It still has. It, uh, these are hearty soldiers. They, uh, really? but they, uh, it's starting to come apart now. Four points of force damage. Okay. And that, Boom. and then it is going to zip back and do another globe of darkness where Nether is standing, and that is okay. It. Pre, that's such an interesting uh, striker ability there. Um. Uh, uh Prion. Right, before I forget, with all the kerfuffle that happened earlier, um, massive thank you to Manx, who donated $18 35 minutes ago um, for 66 inspirations. I completely Woo. forgot about it when everything was happening with Twitch, so I do apologize. What about me? Okay, that's fine. You don't get one. <laughs> thank you, Manx. Well, thank it, you so it's much. six, so you have to roll anyway, because obviously there's seven players. Oh, Poor no, Manx got oh, no, disintegrated not here. the other night. It's nice of him to contribute. So we yeah. all get a D6. And Literally took one for the team. If you get your crack uh -oh. dice, you crack a D6, put it in front of you, you know you've got a D6. Yeah, help your Thanks roommate. Thanks to Alias Thank for that you. one. Right, my attack. I use my attack to cast Booming Blade. I don't know why. Oh, God, I really need to, I need to make something up for that. 
Uh, 16 to hit. Hits. Uh, for 15 damage. Okay. And then I use my bonus action to hit him with an actual one. Ooh. That's me done. <laughs> uh, this is a question to Z and other people that might know the rules better than me. Um, can you use higher spell slots for lower spells if you've run out of lower spell slots? Yes. You can. Okay. Thank you. That's me dumb. On D&D um, &D Beyond, it only shows the ones that make a difference yeah. if you cast them higher. Yeah. But you can cast any spell at a higher spell level if you want. Cool. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to Inaris. It's your turn again. All right. I'm just getting out packing dice to try to use instead of these awful digital dice. All righty. So, steady aim. I want to use that. Okay. So I need to say I'm using it during my turn, correct? Uh, because it gives me advantage on this turn? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Which ability is it again? Sorry. The steady aim? Steady yeah. Aim, you basically just aim. don't move this turn and you then it gives you advantage. Okay. Worth it. And I'm going to attack Creepy Creepy Dude over here with my short bow. It's a 17 to hit. The hits, you didn't roll with advantage though, so go ahead and roll one more time. Shrit fish. Shrit fish. Negatory. Short bow. All right, it still is a hit though. You All suck. right. Do, do I get sneak attack? Yes. To these. Because if do. I get sneak attack, that is <laughs> 23 points of damage. That's an awesome sneak Triple attack. Sixes. You rolled Ooh. three sixes on it, too. Yes. Oh, man. Drenzorg <laughs> is not looking particularly good. Anything else, Anaris? I uh, That is it. That's it. Mara's back in the game. Gonna float on forward. She can just about see everyone. Let's make sure we got that movement there. Yeah, we sure do. And uh, we'll just look at all of you with another accusatory glare and force wisdom saving throws again. Question. Can yes. she see Nether? Nope. Can she see Prion behind Nether in the Wall of Darkness? Um, I am out of sight. Uh, she is floating up in the air, so I'm going to say yes. Okay. Uh, what is what is she doing in this? Wisdom moment? saving throw. She is glaring at you all with with great mm. intensity. So if she can't see me, do I need to make the wisdom save? Uh, no. You do not. But Zorp 21. Do we make these at advantage? Um, not. It was just versus the whale that that was. So not okay. at these. Oh, dear. Zorp Zorp has rolled a two. With a Zorp Zorp's constitution. That's going to Wis be... Wisdom? A wisdom. That's going to just be the two. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Talise and Zorp Zorp are frightened of Mara at the moment. Okay. Um, on this turn. Uh, all right. We've got the knights going now. Both of them are going to instead of their regular attacks are going to point at both of you and I'll need um, wisdom saving throws from Melvin and from um, Talise. That's a 12 for me. 
the night. Um, is tough on the. Uh, Melvin's dice have been tough tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> you feel your body growing stiff and paralyzed <clears throat> from both their accusatory both glares. Yes, you have both failed the DC 14, 15 saving throw. And your bodies go stiff and cold in place. Um, you spend your turn there. Uh, petrified? Is our, so we're petrified? Uh, you're also frightened. Nope, uh, you're just paralyzed. Paralyzed and frightened, and you can each try at the end of your turn to end it. So you can... I didn't realize your turns were both up next, but you can both roll another wisdom saving throw. Remember you have a D6 inspiration, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a 21. Melvin's no longer paralyzed. Beautiful. Please? Oh, I thought you meant hey, I could do it at my turn. Hey. I'm sorry. Roll what it, your turn happened um, right after theirs, so you can roll to try to... Um, okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter! <laughs> Ooh, Talise is still paralyzed. Uh... <laughs> um... Gotcha. And it's Dranzorg's turn, who's going to use his last bricked up of the day to um, throw Prion 30 feet away from him because he's sick of this damage. So he will, if you, oh, well, first make a dexterity saving throw to see if uh, the bricks hit you. Sixteen. Oh, okay. They, you are not thrown and take half of 37 bludgeoning also halved. So, um, how's that going to work? 18, nine points of damage, I guess. So am I thrown or not thrown? You are not thrown. Okay. You are in place. So what's the damage uh, from? Sorry bludgeoning from the bricks that okay. were that flew by you nine um, damage yeah yep uh please make a wisdom saving throw that'll be the end of his turn a wisdom saving throw as well yeah 19 mariah your turn nine damage yeah that's already halved that i have didn't i double halved it yeah okay um, Mara it. begins you, to hear strange whispers in her ethereal um, eardrums and uh, needs to make a wisdom save. Ethereums. Ethereums, yes. I have a six. Uh, that's 11 psychic damage. Um, does she have to flee? Oh. Yeah, I totally forgot that that's how that spell work. It's been so long since anyone's actually like failed their save. Uh, yeah. Move as far away from you using your reaction as your speed allows. Yep. Peace. Bah, bitch. Yeah, um, yeah. There's there is like no good place to be here. No I'll just I'm just gonna stay put. Yeah, that's fine. How how are we doing, everyone? Mm. Uh, uh, okay, great. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, it's Nether's turn. Um, Talise, just so you know, because you were paralyzed, you had the incapacitated condition, which means your concentration would have dropped. Yeah. Aww. Or you are still paralyzed, in fact. So. Yeah. Doubly, doubly messed up. Lose that aura. Right. Yeah. Mm, uh, Nether. Yeah. Nether reaches out a hand and touches Zorb's orb and says, Is it still up? And she 
tries again to destroy the skeleton that is attacking Melvin. Uh, hitting AC 17. Mm hmm. Seven points of force damage. Ooh, Inconsistent. Fix yeah. No more two dice. Yeah. And AC 12. That'll be your first miss of the D6 night. D6 oh. to that. Okay, okay. So, 14. 14 actually, I think, does hit. Yay! Yeah. Thank you, Manx, for the D6. Came in handy. Oh, no, that's adorable. Five points of force damage from that second Eldritch Blast. Still up. Uh, the two blasts knock more pieces of its flesh out. It is just barely up. These are <laughs> giant sacks of hit points, that's for sure. And Zorp Zorp goes running up and attacks with their Zorp sword. Mm, 14, you said hits? Mm hmm. So that's going to be at least two points of damage. Is that going to finish it off? Uh, go ahead and roll it. Go ahead and roll it. Okay. All right. A total of nine points did, of piercing damage. You did seven. So as this one collapses to the floor Damn. and the hands on the wall begin pulling it back slowly into and, its ooh. resting place. Creepy. And Zorb Zorb disappears and pops back to next to Nether, enshrouding her in darkness once again. Mm-hmm. Brian standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yes, indeed. I will repeat thy action with a booming blade. Oh, I'm going to use a D6. Mm -mm, that's 19 to hit. Hits. Good, good. Uh, that is a 9 plus 3, 12 damage. And Dranzorg collapses into pieces. Nice. Which are scattered across the room. And then I will 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to there. And hit this creature with a 26. Absolutely. For eight points of damage. Mm hmm. Bring us to Inaris. Lost my unmute button. Couldn't find it. Alrighty. All right. What is the next most pressing threat that looks the most like they're struggling. That would be me, but uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the more damage has been dealt to Mara than this, than her knight. Um, <laughs> she can't escape me. Uh, steady aim. Okay. Uh, I am going to attack her with my short bow. That is a 24. That hits. Crit fish, crit fish. I'm, I'm going to do it just in case. That's a 20. 30, 20, not a crit. All right. So many dice. 18 damage with sneak attack. Okay. Uh, she's barely hanging on. She seems yes. slightly resistant to that damage, as it is non-magical. Okay. And I am good for this turn. Okay. She is unhappy with what's going on. And is going to undo. Um. Um. The only one she can get to is Prion. So there we go. Um, do you have a? Can you attack when it enters your range, or is that just with your pole arm? It's just with a pole arm. Okay, 
All right, it's going to try and touch you. The 23. I'm going to use a second level spell to shield. All right, and then her friend uh, is going to... Yeah. Do you get disadvantage before I roll that shield? Uh, thank you. 20. Yeah. Okay, I cast shield. I'm and then just, her I'm friend is going to... That. Yeah, attack... Talise, who has I do been... take an attack of opportunity for that, though. Okay. Mm -mm. I probably missed with a 10. Uh, well, you, you Sorry, use your wait, reaction wait, you to shield. shield. Correct. You yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It all happened so quickly. It's all good, I understand. I'm swinging at Talise. I have a 14 on that first attack, which is kind of hilarious. And then... A twenty-three. Ow. Um, to least this is a crit because you are um paralyzed. Yep. So it will be um a total of twenty-eight points of slashing damage. Okay. Halved, so but... fourteen, yeah. How are you Owie. doing? I'm not going to tell you. You're the one that's hitting me. <laughs> okay. I could see if I needed to. All right, that's done. Melvin. Um, how is Morrow looking? Very weak. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna cast a mind sliver on her. I need an intelligence saving throw of DC fifteen. Intelligence. I have an eight. Fails. Seven points of psychic damage, and she's got a D four subtracted from her next saving throw <clears throat> before the end of my next turn. Um Mara seems to fade out of existence and where she was a tendril to the um uh to the amber monolith exists as her body seems to be pulled back and just kind of lays there inert just hovering above it you notice a similar tendril extending to this creature here um to dranzorg as his bones start to sort of shake and pull themselves together slowly um <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm gonna move then to there. Okay. And anything else? Nope. That'll be my turn. All right. Talisa, you're no longer paralyzed. Hey, hey. Uh, damage was dealt to you. Um, you, I believe you are still restrained, though, as you have not broken free from the hands on the wall. And you are the only one within five feet of the wall. I need you to make another uh, dexterity I, saving throw. I thought I got unrestrained. You succeeded in not time. being bricked up further, but you, are st you still are stuck on the wall. Did he centerpieces count or no? Cool. Fifteen. Yep, you are still stuck in place, but you are not bricked up any further. You can take the turn as normal, except obviously moving, and you will yeah. attack at disadvantage. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Um, I'm going to do this good one. I'm going to pop up another aura of vitality. Mm-hmm. And I would like to heal Jade Creon. Thank you. all For eight, because it rolled. Gracias. Cool. Anything else? That's probably it, huh? 
Yeah, action and bonus right there. Ranzorg's body begins to reformulate slowly but surely. Mariah. Reformulate as in it looks like it might come back together and start attacking us. Yes, and there's this long tendril extending from the... Um, the thing. Uh, the thing. From the look. obelisk. The Does amber. it look magic-y? The tendril? Oh, yes. It's like energy. Just like an arc of negative energy just coursing through it. I'm debating whether or not I tried dispelling it, but um, I don't know if that would be helpful or not. Um... I will attempt to dispel the magic of the amber stone thing on my turn with dispel magic. Um, okay. Unless you think that that is totally not worth my time. It's up to you. You're welcome to try. Yeah, I'll try. All right, please roll a caster level check. Oh boy. Remember, you got a d6 right. if you need it. That's true. Oh my god, that's what this d6 is for. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, just been playing with it for so long that I totally forgot why I had it. I'm pretty um, sure you also get your I do jack get, of all trades for that. Yeah, I do get my jack of all trades bonus for this as well. All Cards right. are almost as good at dispellers as um, abjurers. Uh, all right. Oh, I need well, to make it they're cast. between abjurers mm -hmm. and everyone else. That's the, that's the way to put it. Um, it's it's just a charisma check, right? Just a charisma check, yeah. And then mm -hmm. add your half your proficiency bonus. <sighs> okay. All right. So 16 plus half efficiency bonus is one. And I'll throw that D6 in here as well. I'm um, just roll the one that I have plus five. Uh, so uh, 22. 22. That's the equivalent of basically dispelling a ninth level spell. Um, Got it. <laughs> that is that is huge. And you see the um, uh, just by the sheer force of this uh, this dispel. Um, the tendrils vanish and you see a, a little crack start to form in the monolith itself and then you sense a dark dark presence making itself known in the back of your mind which doesn't say yep. anything just yet but um is certainly there hi <laughs> well done mariah anything else on your turn I think we're okay, guys. Just let, let's get that skeleton and get the fuck out of here, okay? I'd like to speak to you about the benefits of worshiping Orcus. <laughs> God damn it, Sean! <laughs> They've been trying to reach you about your car warranty. <laughs> my sh Is my ship okay? <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> I just have boat oh. anxiety. All right, yeah, it's another not your car's warranty. It's your ship's warranty. Anxiety. Did you reverse mute by accident? It is Nether's turn. Oh. Duh. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Zorp Zorp goes wah, 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 and tells Nether that there's another one, but there's a lot of people in between her and it. So this will be a little out of order. Uh, but Nether is Nether is going to rely on Zorp Zorp to help her move into an area where she could perhaps get a shot. Sure, where she won't hit anybody. Is that all right? Yes. Uh, if you are moving to... there, it would have at least three quarters cover because there's a big rock here. Yeah. All right. Well, then he's not going to help her move there. He's going to help her move there. Okay. A little better. And she's going to shoot. To Eldritch Blists. Uh, 
Oh, so 11's gonna miss. Mm hmm. And a 9's gonna miss. I'll say that that was Zorp Zorp's turn helping Mether. Okay. All done. Breon. I will smack it with a Boomian Blade for armor class 20. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. 18 damage. Uh. Um, yeah, okay, yep, got it. Ooh, Just cutting deep into this one, which is uh, missed. Falling apart much more quickly than the other, as its connection to the monolith has been at least temporarily severed by a big, big bomb of dispel magic. All right, um, uh, Inaris. It is your turn. One enemy stands, as far as you can tell, still alive. Okay, I am going to take that shot. I'm going to use my steady aim, just in case, and I'm going to attack. Come on. That is a natural 20 for a 27 wow. to hit. Yep, this is gonna go hurt. ahead and roll that rogue crit, Ooh. not a quick fish. <laughs> Is she already that, crit? It is I already crit. I was trolling myself. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was it's so was hard to tell, him. Jade. You're so British. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it gives me with my sneak attack that's 17 damage, and then I roll something else because I crit. It does not that? look great. Mark. Why not? It should just click that, and it should do it. The it did not give me my crit damage. It's not giving any damage no. when I click on it. Same. Okay. Um, That's for my battle axe, but not for... Please, no. uh, so roll 66. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dice barf. And they're all fuzzy dice, too. So, 20. <laughs> Uh, and then twenty, and then roll an extra d six. Four. Okay, twenty nine is the total. Which uh, ignore this that. creature that was a takes accident. that arrow and then uh, falls down to a knee before slowly writing itself back up. Anything else for Nerys? Arrow to the knee. Was a survive okay uh, yeah that was an accident and it unleashes an attack against one more series of attacks one against talise and one against prion i will attack it as soon as it attacks okay talise. it will attack talise first 16 26 to hit 16 hits for 13 damage all right talise you take um, first of all, uh, you said 13. Okay. Uh, Talise, you take 21 points bludgeoning damage, half to 10, but Prion's blow sends this creature back into the wall. Everything sounds quiet for now, but there is this energy that is beginning to seep out from this amber monolith. Almost, uh, tendrils are, it looks like they're searching around one quickly finds um the for floating um spectral form looks like if there could be an, a dead undead that's what mara looks like right now and one is making its way toward dranzorg as well and there are others that are just kind of floating around Jesus. the right now um it's not made it to dranzorg yet but it is just reaching out and feeling in that direction Do we smash it? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see it? the sentinel, yeah. Jesus, I threw everything I had at that thing and it's still like fucking around. Is it floating or Nope, it's emerging from that uh pool of ichor. DM, does this look like it's a magical effect or a like biological effect? Magical definitely. 
is is Nele is Nele is Nene muffled in here like she was in the tower? Yes. And am oh, I still attached to the damn wall? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can break free yet. Yeah, now, yeah, now that there's uh, the, the hands sort of. Free. Have we got any actions while we're out out of this combat? Or so can I? Yeah, yeah. You're I... you're um. We are out of initiative order because okay. Talise has got nine more rounds of her magic. Um... I will say we are out of initiative, but we're you, you do see. This, yeah, we, these we connections beginning to be reestablished. How are the Daenerys looking? Like, do they still are they still like tendrils are also classy. reaching out towards them slowly but surely to uh, towards uh, their hearts to okay. reestablish. Yeah, we just uh, break it. Yeah, I'm. I just pull a dagger out and and I I flop it around to the pommel side and I see if it it will crack against like Dominic's shoulder. Will um. Will the amber crack underneath pressure now that they're not connected? Um, uh, against uh, against them, um, you hit it, uh, make an attack roll. Um, bludgeoning, obviously, if this comes through. Nope, seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Jesus. it's a little. Can, oof, it's tough to tough to break. You think so? Um, in can I um, pop a healing potion? Just do your bonus action. You still got your I'm spell. I'm gonna, up. but I want to do. I want to do both. I'm oh, okay. really hurting. <laughs> Mariah, do you want me to attack it with my crossbow? Um, How much maybe. damage do you want to deal? What is the pool of Icar look like? Hmm. What does the pool of Icar look like? Uh, it now is closer. sort of a thick, bubbling, dark liquid. Does Just it look flammable? It. Can I uh, ch charge it with my trident? I'll loose an arrow. Uh, I, 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 I don't think you want to touch the, the liquid prion. I'm going to reach out with my trident and, and try and hit it. It is foul smelling, the liquid, but um, uh, the... Uh, uh, obelisk itself. Um, Prion, just go ahead and roll a couple of attacks. Have I still got disadvantage? Uh, yes, but yes, you do. Is, is, is it a normal attack then? If it's just a static object? Uh, no, but its its AC is based on its solidness, okay. not its ability to move around. Uh, I'm a class 16. Okay, yep, go ahead and roll your damage. Um, that will be five slashing and two thunder. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, no, no, it no, will it's start... not a two thunder, it's too far away, sorry. Okay, it will begin to, uh, it, it releases a kind of tendril of energy which shoots out to you dealing four points of necrotic damage at that hit um mm -hmm. you figure that it's got a bit of a defense mechanism anyone that's going to hit it with an attack is going to um be subject e to even at range yeah mm -hmm. what order? okay so i'm so i could and... cast shatter i have enough spell slots that that won't that that won't take <coughs> away all of my spells so i could do shatter on it perfect do spell to cast to... do it do or it do, do you... it or do you want me to do shatter on them and get them no. out from under the <laughs> no you hear a clinking sound as you see the head of dranzorg begin to drag towards the incapacitated body please zorb, 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 zorb goes running over zorb, 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 and picks it up and <laughs> misty steps away <laughs> dropping the head <laughs> He, he's standing there and it's starting to drag him across the room. <laughs> zorp, 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 zorp. Uh, Talise, are you okay. using the... Okay, gotcha. 22 points of damage. Um, awesome. You take 10 points of necrotic as two tendrils branch out towards you. And then I do my bonus action on my aura and get that mm -hmm. back. <laughs> Okay, just make sure you're 
uh, still able to concentrate. Um, this is now fractured in many oh, places. You can see um, a what almost looks like a robed, hooded figure. It's like a shadow inside this um, crystal, which seems to wa- move forward, Maybe. looking through the spidery cracks. Um, I cast thunder. And wave. you hear a <laughs> awesome. You hear a voice in the back of your head, Mariah. Which one of your friends shall I inhabit? I think back, get the fuck off our lawn, bitch. And Thunder Wave, <laughs> with that, goes... You take four points of necrotic damage, Melvin, as a tendril goes out to you, but with that Thunder Wave, it shatters apart. All the tendrils drop, and there is a thump sound as the bodies of both Cedra and... Dominic fall prone to the ground, released from their stasis. The letter, the obelisk, tumble out of their hands, and they lie there, both unconscious. Uh, I will... uh... (laughs) Oh my god. I actually thought I was Uh... muted. (laughs) No! (laughs) Um, I will take a, uh, a handkerchief and um, pick up the obelisk with without touching it with my uh, bare skin and wrap it up and I will put it away into my pack. Um, Done. Mm-hmm. Do Should they leave? look like they need spare the dying? Are they are they cool? Yeah, how are they doing? That's a, like, uh, Dominic has a head wound. Cedra seems to just be unconscious. Like spare the dying, serious or? Mm-hmm. Well, he took Band-Aid. an obelisk to the head. Yeah. Uh, make a make a medicine check. I will um, help you with that. Awesome. Can another so, check to see okay. if if the Good, threat, that first one sucks. Any threat still around? Any sort of that is a 20. sound of anything moving or anything in her head. Uh uh yeah make a um you can make a perception check to try and listen out for anything coming uh in 20 he does seem to be dying um from this head wound but spare the dying all right i I think i'm going to have zorp zorp make this check this is wisdom or intelligence perception is wisdom right right in that Mm -hmm. case it does not matter Oh, thank God all that's over. Nothing more to worry about. With a four. Um, Indeed. Um, I, Melvin's going to use Mage Hand to dip a small vial that contained ink at one point into this black viscous liquid to try to collect a little bit of it for further research later. Okay. It seems to be almost drying up as this shattered crystal lies broken. Um but you can do so. Um, as a precaution, um, I'm going to, um, n- not very gracefully, since I'm not exactly the strongest person in the world, but I'm going to sort of just drag Cedra a little bit farther away from Dominic. And as like a hyper precaution, I handcuff her. Okay. And then I would like I have those in my inventory. <laughs> Look at what her face looks like. This is her... Uh, I'd like to cast Cure Wounds on Cedric, and I'll drop the aura. Cedric? <laughs> I know, that's what I think to remember it. Just go with it. Just go with it. It's what I wrote in my I like the weird, really like, notes. Cedra-Dominic mashup. I know. Like. I know. I wrote it in my notes like that, and it's what I think of him as, Cedric. Cedramanica. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, weirdly... <laughs> He looks like how um, Prion and Nether uh, saw him. Um, Some of you saw Dominic before as a very aged man. Some Mm -hmm. of you saw him as perfectly normal. Um, Mm -hmm. He's actually quite handsome now to all of you. Uh, 
you know, a damn noble looking face. Um, and yeah, that's a it's a marked change from what from how you saw him before. In the same way that Cedra used to carry sort of this mist, this dark, dusky mist with her as everywhere she walked. Um, also, she used to float. No longer seems to be the case. Yay! Do we want to wake him up down here or upstairs? We want to get the hell out of here. Yeah, good call. Yes, okay. let's... I have a look around just to make sure there's nothing else in this room hiding away, lurking you away. You can perception check. Mm-hmm. Nah, Melvin, nothing. do you need a hand looking around? Ten. Uh, sure. Everything seems quiet. <laughs> seems not. Uh, is this yeah. perception or investigation? Investigation is what I would help you with. Well, I, I could help with both. Proficient and like basically everything. <laughs> At DM, is this perception or investigation to take a look around here? Oh, in in here, uh, make investigation. Hold on. I have a D6. Okay. It's going to be a 13 total. Okay. As you did spend some time, too, at the um, obelisk, because it's drying out, you do see um, what looks to be a small box and then a sword lying in the the icker there. Um, there seems to be a small chest and then a sword that you would you think almost should have been dissolved from this strange liquid, but is um, still uh, still seems perfectly fine. There is also a um, a uh, um, there are twelve of these amulets that you all are wearing now too, uh, that seem to have been thrown into that liquid. Um, and these are, these are in the like drying out liquid. Mm -hmm. Is the liquid sort of like evaporating as it dries? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it almost looks like it's draining down you don't see where it's going but it's kind of going to this the base of the obelisk and just disappearing around the base it's almost as if the stone is absorbing it creepy Creepy. Um, i will very carefully scramble down there careful not to touch any of the liquid of course Mm -hmm. so i'll wait for it to drain a bit more probably before i go down and then i will retrieve those items the sword is um smithed from a uh, some type of metal that um gives it almost like a rose gold or um or like rose brass what i forget what it's called the red the redder version of brass but that type of um hue to it it almost looks red um the it, it makes you think of a blood-stained blade in a way but it's clearly just the metal and across the um blade the word um oath maker is inscribed in common Ooh. fascinating so you said there's a sword a box and 12 amulets yes okay i'll bring all of those back up out of the the pit oh and we can start getting these guys back upstairs. Yeah, I think we should go back upstairs. Um, do you want me to open the box down here or wait? Let's just. Did Did you want to check out the armor while we're going up? Um, Hi. I mean, by this point, Saran might have found it already. <laughs> yeah, that's totally my my head cannon now. That <laughs> Saran spent this entire time trying to get upstairs. She actually, you know, saw the mark of the raven and stuff on there and was like, oh, that's really pretty and interesting. I'm sure they'll want to hear about this. So she spent this whole time doing perfect sketches from a couple different angles in her journal about what exactly the top of the tower looked like and the uh, trying to reproduce the mark of the raven. So, yeah, we'll go with that. What a good little scholar she is. 
that's just how dedicated she is. Yeah. She's just that good. So I think with some some degree of effort, we make our way back upstairs with Cedra and Dominic's unconscious forms in tow. Okay, yep, that's fine. You can Cedra pull and them Cedric. All. No. <laughs> but that's not what I pull said. Them all up. <laughs> what would happen to Dementlier if they died? Great question. I mean... Nope. I had no there were nowhere that I was going with that sentence. I have no idea what would happen. You hear a voice nether in the back of your head that says... Not such a judgmental place as Saltmarsh. Could be yours for the taking. I kind of hear you. You're still muted? Sean? No, he's just trolling us. I say. Oh. Yeah. I already have a home. And I've got to get back there. Oh no. This place. Bither reaches out and Zorb Zorb takes her hand and helps her find the rope. She okay. starts to climb. And you all can climb back up. The house is curiously silent. Um you hear the wind blowing outside and the structure seems to moan and you see a couple of times some bricks fall apart uh fall just in the corner one of the busts in the gallery just kind of rolls off to the side and shatters on the ground and this place seems to be slowly giving up on itself That's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Another, do you want to see if that belladonna plant wants to come on a boat? It doesn't. Plants do transplants, right? <laughs> if, if the house is giving up the ghost, the plant's probably going to go with it. We might as well offer it the opportunity for a, a relocation. <laughs> giving up the ghost. <laughs> I would suspect that while this house might dissolve all that will be left is the plants she has a point mm. Fair besides enough. I have this and I hold up the belladonna seeds hmm. bring some new mm. vegetation to salt marsh amongst your other efforts. Heather thinks about the assassin vine seeds she also has. And <clears throat> smiles. <laughs> um, do you, do we think, DM, that there's enough time to um, question... Sorry, something really weird just happened outside my window. Um, I, there's enough time to wake up and question Cedra and Dominic um, before the house um, completely eats it, or should we skedaddle? Uh, you would have... You don't think this is going to be collapsed in an hour, but... Um, okay. Over the next couple... You wouldn't want to spend the night here. Okay. <clears throat> um, then let's just post up real quick check tend to wounds um in maybe that side room that we um investigate the armor rested first. in and 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 get that armor um i can hear to i can hear uh Sarayan tugging it down the stairwell now um <laughs> <laughs> clunk clunk um and uh wake these two kiddos up and see what the fuck's up okay on opposite uh, ends of the room <laughs> I don't want them anywhere near each other. Are you... Is there one you are waking up before the other? Um, is that decision always... open to debate, by the way? Waking well, them up? What? Waking them up? Sure. Yeah. I think I think we should definitely wake him up because he was at least the non-violent of the two in that frozen moment. 
so he might actually be able to communicate more. He's also ostensibly the one that brought us here, although I'm a little fuzzy on that detail now, given mm -hmm. everything we've learned, so... Yes, yeah, someone who looked like him brought us here. I think we should just leave them and be on our way, frankly. Who says we can we get out of here? Belladonna. But then we'll never know the end of the story. Plus, I said we're trapped here with the mist. It's true. Dominic was the one who said that he was, could get us out. That is a fair point. He did say that. It's... I'll healing word him. Priyan, make sure he doesn't run off anywhere. I tie his shoelaces together. <laughs> Go sit on him. <laughs> oh, analog. Okay. Five his, points of healing. His eyes kind of roll back and open, and he looks around the room. And... Where? What happened here? Do you know who we are? I dreamed of you, I think. Okay. Did you dream of being in a hospital for a really long time? With a mask <sighs> on your face. He smiles and... This is... And looking over, then he sees Cedra. What? Is she alive? Yep. Did she bring you here? Uh, no, you did. I see. Or you ish. The last thing I remember is that, well, <laughs> he smiles, gives a broad toothy smile to you, Mariah. I think it's best we get out of here then, yes? I can explain everything, I think. I just, I would, uh, uh, allow me to su suggest we move along and, um, Please make a wisdom saving throw, Mariah. Oh, sweet. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Does he appear to be doing any magical? Because I'm, look, obviously, I'm there on guard. Yeah. He just mm. smiles and speaks to her, and his, his voice sounds just a little sweeter, a little more He's pleasant. He's just so hunky. Oh, I, I, I suppose there's... Charm? I, Hmm? Is it it is. Charm? If you have that advantage, Mariah. Um. Um, if I am of the half elf persuasion, I do have that. So let's roll okay. again. Twelve. <laughs> and not much better. I assume Still, that. Um, uh, yeah. You want the, it's just that, and you have this desire to. You just feel like he's right. Like following his yeah. lead is going to be the right thing to do. All right, I there's some wisdom to all of us just getting the fuck out of here. All right, Prion, heave her. Let's see if the carriage is still out there or something. But sure. Wait, what, what about the, the armor and Saran? Saran's right there. Did she <laughs> did she bring the armor back, DM? <laughs> yes. She did. It's uh, beautiful. Almost looks like crafted of silver almost oh, it appears to be hmm. half plate if serain is there it, are, is, are we within aurora uh no i <laughs> <laughs> worth a shot oh you tried don't push it too far I, I pick up did you the woman no excuse me uh, your name milady i yes. mariah mariah Good. Um, what did you find in the house? Oh, gosh, all sorts of stuff. Um, I mean, we found your mother's diary. We found uh, amulets. We found did you? her body, uh, too. Her body. Um, Save that one for last. We've got, like, a pretty decent handle on the picture here, although there are some gaps. 
that we would love to get um, sorted out. Could I see the diary, please? Um, Saran has them, I think. Ah, good. And uh, would it perhaps be odd that Mariah is being so forthcoming? Probably by this, this point, um, she seems very um, akin to do um, what... Uh, what uh, she's told by him, there's which not, is not a characteristic of Mariah about it, in general. So <laughs> More so in the fact I'm that the we've one with witnessed... I'm charm guys! We have witnessed this with... Uh, <laughs> oh, God. With, with uh, Nether and Sarayan. Yeah. I'm not literally falling over my feet to please him. Like... No. You're not starting to write sonnets in your, in your diary? <laughs> please. I write would all I, my sonnets would I, in my would head. I be, would I be much. inclined to perhaps have an inkling of what's going on? Yeah. I, I think everyone by now would know that this is a little strange, at least. What happens if somebody else charms somebody who's already charmed? Oh, we know that answer because I did that to Saran when um, Jolak had control over her. All right. Bradman. It's pretty conflicting, right? Yeah. 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 But if if you if I fail, your charm supersedes his charm. All right. Well then, I'm going to try and use what's it called? Fey presence. Um. Interestingly, he's going to have to make this as well. So, uh, I need a wisdom save at advantage from um, Mariah and a wisdom save too from, what's his butt? 16. Dominic. 16. You have saved. Drip. Tits. As um, all of a sudden, Mar uh, <laughs> Nether looks a little bit more fetching than she normally does. Nether, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> and Dominic shakes his head for a moment and then says, No need for tricks. And he winks at you, and he nether to make a wisdom save. No! Oh my god. This I'm is why I hate magic. And so just be like, stupid. Do you think you can knock him out? I'm going to do one better than that. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna hit him with the battle axe. I've got a 13. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yep. Um, as Prion oh, comes with the battle axe, he says, ah, help, um, help out, me. Nether, um, well, I'll whisper, with that wink, uh, you see Prion walking towards um, him and about to bring the axe down. Um, help me. Okay, uh, just a second oh, here. God. Um, we all need to calm down. I am going I'm to totally just in a second. I have to <laughs> give me just a second. I did this is was not surprised of suspecting this. I reach out and touch him, and I say "Falschadelich," and he turns invisible. Who me? Nope. No. Fuck. <sighs> that shoot! I'm out of counter spe spell slots. Damn it! <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I line his ass in fairy fire. Be like everyone in the room in fairy fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I, I know where he was. I have to shoot fairy fire where he was. Purple. Are you still gonna try and attack him, Prion? Prion, if I, people haven't realized, Prion's not himself. So yes. Oh. Okay. Um, oh shit! And I just helped you. With still go fire. ahead and try and swing with disadvantage. He was restrained, so he can't really. Um, the attack was coming in first, jail, Don't worry. Go anywhere. Um, and he has failed actually. I don't think so he was the, restrained. Uh, was he? No, uh, I only handcuffed Sudra. Oh, okay. Well, either way, um, I rolled a, a natural two on the deck save for him. So suddenly every, I don't know if the rest of you want to make deck saves as well. Suddenly 
pretty much everyone in the room becomes <laughs> a target of fairy fire uh, because it is a large thing. So Prion, you can make your attack as normal. Yeah, you guys look, you guys look beautiful in purple. Is it still Let's with advantage, see. or do I get That's advantage now? Or? Uh, no. You attacked before she cast. Oh, uh, okay. Nether uh, is coated in fairy fire. Eleven. I am not. Oh my god! I One time not. I roll rubbish. I he dips out of the way for both of those, and then so after you that, trick my he comes ass. lit in fairy fire. No, come on now. You said I sent you, right? So drop the charms, you vampire me. bastard. It's not a vampire, please. We've met one of those already. <laughs> yeah, we have. I say that anyway. Brion uh, gets I'm... better the longer I know him. I am not a vampire. I oh, drop the charms. I'm if gonna you hit you to again. Attack him again. I'll I... fucking kill you. I know. Nether. Debris. With... Calm down. Drop I'm the charms. Can we all I can just see... like? I can see this is upsetting you all. I will drop the charms, but look, this is the only way. You are charging me with an axe. We need to get out of here. I was charging you with an axe I because am, you charmed my friends. Now drop the I charm. I am the heir of this land. Do you understand? Uh, don't we know give that. a toss, fella. Drop we the charm. We don't charms. give a shit. Can, can, can we all just like go to separate sides of the room? Shut up, like, you're charmed. Calm down. <laughs> You fucking tell me to shut up You're again. A bit of, I can shove your sword so far up your ass it's gonna pierce your brain stem. I'm sure it's you will. It's actually an axe, not Drop a sword. the charms now. He's invisible, right? And covered in fairy fire. Covered in fairy fire, right? Yeah, he's just this glowing. Um... I can, I, I'm gonna count to three, <laughs> or I'm gonna swing again. Drop the charms. I stand in front of him. So noble. I will. Will you let me it. go, Sir Knight, if that is the case? I'm not holding you to anything. Let my friends go now. <laughs> We're making a deal. I drop them the instant you give me your word that I can go. You have my word that I won't attack you. Aye. We're here to help you, but you're charming, my friends. Now drop it. Oh, you're here to help me. Good. On your word, then. Yes, and... drop the charms. To be fair, Dominic, I say over my shoulder, um, we, we would really like to understand what's going on here. I, and just... the charms drop. Okay, good. The other one's <laughs> dominated. <laughs> she I'm turns use slowly, looking back to him. He, she he just shrugs. Nothing about an agreement of us not attacking you, though. She's correct. Guys, guys, can we can we can I do eyes right of the grave? Like, can we not? Can... Of course. <sighs> eyes of the grave. Eyes of the grave. <laughs> he is not undead. Is anybody I immediately undead? uncork a bottle and I just walk to the other side of the room and take a massive swig of alcohol. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, save me some. No. Come on. <laughs> My, um, I remember my uh, stepsister gesturing towards Cedra and I coming back to the house. I remember finding a letter, a letter, and that's, that's it. We, that's all I remember. What? What did you find within? I don't... If you'll excuse me for my self-defense mechanism, but I don't understand what's happening. I'm going to make a conjecture, I say, gesticulating with my bottle, that she clocked you over the head and then took over. And it's not exactly clear to us how long she's been in charge of shit here because things are really really wibbly with people's memories um but she's been in charge sort of except she's also been stuck here with you um and there's been there was another one of you that was the one who sent us here and it's all just weird and gross and honestly we really just want to leave Dementia and go home that was kind of the entire reason of us coming up to this house in the first place is because other you was like if you help me defeat Cedra then we'll get you the fuck out of here 
She betrayed me. To be fair, the contents of the letter kind of potentially damned her. And if there is any hope of reconciliation between your two families before that, she had every reason to fear that you would toss her out the window once you learned whatever was in that letter. Well, I suppose there will be no reconciliation now, will there? Thank you. I see she's in shackles already. I'm sure you'll be free to leave without any issue. I'll make sure the blockades are turned away. I'll write whoever I need to of my own authority and let you all leave. It's not that sort of blockade. It's some magical mist keeping us here. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. May I? He kind of gestures towards the door. Sure. His shoes are tied he together. He kind of walks past and... His shoes are tied together. His shoes are tied together. <laughs> <laughs> she really did it. I forgot. <laughs> he, looks at, he looks at you. Say the drow are devious. Uh, and after untying his shoelaces, <laughs> walks towards the door and opens it up and you guys see sunlight beginning to cascade through you see someone walking down the road um confusedly a couple other people just kind of walking up these country roads you see a dozen ruined manors dotting the countryside and then you see the city of dementlia just about a half mile down the road in mid-afternoon light. Yeah, that's good news at least. Let's get the head out of here. Salt marsh. Can, can I ask you a question before we skedaddle, Dominic? Actually, I have two Of course. Questions. What are you going to do with her? Just out of curiosity. Well, she... It's unlikely I'll be able to, well, prove something that I can't even remember. I have no physical proof of. I guess I could stand up in court, but at least, well, with these journals, I can dispute her claim and uh, make sure I ascend to my rightful post and I will have her exiled, I suppose. Or we could just... Let her be forgotten here. Unless she disintegrates your ass. I feel like that was Unless probably the only... She was casting some sort of... Melvin, what's that magical spell you mentioned? Uh, d disintegrate. Aye, ah, yeah, that one. She, she disintegrated a, a bunch of commoners. Basically anyone who lied to her. There's no bigger liar than Cedra herself. Let her be forgotten here. What about the one back at the palace? They're probably both gone. They're probably what about... manifestations of whatever the power that was in the pit of this place was. That weird. Where's the... Uh, thing? I'll have a look around for the carriage that brought us here. Uh, there is no black carriage. There are some people walking, a few people on horseback, but um, the carriage is gone. On, honest to all gods, Preon, I have the niggling sense that those versions of Cedra and Dominic aren't real. Not really. Well, we've done our job then. The second question that I have is, um, do you have any memory of talk or otherwise regarding pacts that may have been made between either your family or the council here and some I don't know otherworldly sea entities does that ring a bell well I suppose we can well no we can't walk and talk I need to take care of things here yes 
um, he was part of some sort of maritime authority, and they had strange meetings, this kind of cult-like. I don't know. I always thought it was some sort of initiation, but uh, mm -hmm. oh, yes. Okay. Um, well, we'll get out of your hair. Um, I will leave you with the thought. Take it however you will. That your mother put a lot of stock in the idea of peace between you and Cedra. And if the evidence that's been left behind here including those two pieces of diary, is anything to be believed, which I think it is, then your conflict with her is manufactured. Brought down through power and blood and pain that isn't yours. But it fed on your innocence as children. So there might be room still for something that need not be cut off by death. Make a away. persuasion check, Mariah. Oh boy. She can use my inspiration. Can I? Yes. Can't, Less. Can't can't pass that along. What? D D20, a D twenty you can. Uh, Do you have a D twenty? I have a D six and then I had inspiration marked, so it's possible. Oh, then you've got yeah, then you've got a D ah, yeah. you've got a D twenty that you can pass on, yeah. And I've been carrying twenty six. Get that off of there. He um you feel a familiar presence sort of standing with you as you begin to explain this to him. And a warm, comforting feeling sort of continues to envelop you as you continue to talk, almost as if some of these words are being provided for you. And you make this argument so eloquently. And this Dominic is someone who is exists to be in charge of any room as is evidenced by the way he talks to people and his own powers but he just listens quietly and as you finish speaking um you hear something like a cloth sloughing to the side behind you and dropping and the room you're standing you he looks over your shoulder and is just almost standing agape and Looking over your shoulder, where he's staring at, you see that a cloth has fallen off of a portrait depicting Theodora, his mother. The painting is in almost perfect condition. And he just stares at it for a moment and then looks down at the letter, at the diary. I... don't understand the entirety of what you just said, but, um... You are... saying that our opposition is... a pattern? It repeats itself? Indeed. Deposing... The idea of deposing Cedra always felt so familiar, and so did being trapped by her ambition. I bet in many right. ways she felt the same. Maybe something new then. Will you take her back to the city? With me? Sure. I think some fresh air would do us all some good. Um, one last thing. Uh, it, Sorry. Hi, my name's Melvin. Um, I'm, I'm I'm a wizard and a researcher. Um, and one of the things I was researching is a substance called liar's dust, 
which originated here. Um, we found out that it was actually the dust of the disintegrated people that Cedra was killing. Other um, Cedra. The other Cedra, yeah, the the scary one. Um, and there was like a whole underground black market thing going on that they were selling it and stuff. Um, you might want to look into that when you have time, of course. This day is getting stranger and stranger, but I can... Hardly not take your word for it after what's just happened. So, okay. Um, and if, if you do happen to come across any um, of the dust, I would really appreciate it if you could send it our way over in Saltmarsh. Um, I'm doing some research on it and could really use some more samples. Whatever's left. I mean, clearly there's not going to be any more of it made at this point. Always just figure out a way to make your own. <laughs> Don't I'll see what I can do. Don't understand the difference. You're, you're fine with <laughs> using it if someone else does it, but not if you do it yourself. And we can leave the moralizing for after <laughs> we've gotten back to the ship. Let's just let let's go. Let's go. <laughs> after some walking, after um, Dominic bids farewell, um, he takes a boat. There is confusion in Salt Marsh as Dominic Salt himself Marsh. walks through the city, or Salt Marsh, in, uh, in uh, Dementlio, in Porta Lucy, in the main city, as Dominic walks through it unmasked and people look shocked at how unfashionable he is. And you can hear them mentioning Cedra as well, as she is groggy, but eventually regains consciousness and they recoil in fear and point and this entire city is turned on its head not knowing what to do and as both of them walk you can see the city isn't quite what you saw it before the fronts of the building spruced up beautifully but it's like behind everything is crumbling just a bit certain grand townhomes that you saw on your way to the port look to be as if their facades were just in completely illusory not existing at all this is not the grand city that it pretended to be and its illusion continues to crumble as you travel and after uh, not too long waiting for you, you see Pixie's Fury in full repair. A familiar dwarf atop the crow's nest, yelling down, There they are, finally! I have never been more happy to see you in my life. <laughs> well, we're stocked up, we're repaired. Did you find what you're looking for? I think we're all set. Ugh. Let's get the fuck out of here, all right? Yeah! Captain says go. We have to go. To the ship. And I'm happy about it. You Just so you know, soon. though, uh, it looked like it were lost over the ocean, but... Well, I don't mean to cast any bad omens for our trip, but... I think I saw a blue gull come land mm. on the mast. Best we set double watches moving forward. With you there. All right. Oh, uh, let me know if you see it again. Oh, I. I'll let everyone know. I'm not talking about my gull, are they? My no. girl. <laughs> my girl. Talking about um, my girl. The Prion okay. clarification was uh, one of the three locations for the Thalassic League that we knew about were Porta Lacine, the city of Victal, and an island home to blue seagulls and gray trees. Ah, uh, yes. I remember now. Gracias. Mm -hmm. As we say goodbye to this place, this very strange place, will all receive the benefits of a level up 
<gasps> and we will go through the loot um, momentarily once I'm able to um, copy and paste some things. Um, I will tell you that momentarily. So, but congratulations level, on reaching level your eighth level. What do we get? What do we ASI's get? feats, fun stuff Woo! for you non-multiclassers, or maybe good stuff for multi-classers too. I don't know. Who knows? Nice.